Hey, Ramon. Hey, Deanna. Hey. Look at y'all being early. Hey, hey Deanna. Hey, Deanna, how you doing? I love my What's brother. Cool. <laughs> We're in practice mode right now, so this is perfect. All right. How you doing? Good. How are y'all doing? Good, good. We just you know how you know how we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so yep. excited. Yep, excited too. <laughs> y'all keeping keeping busy or you got cabin fever in this craziness? We doing it all. We doing it all. We <laughs> working working from the house and right. Moving around and all that stuff, so mm -hmm. it's good. All righty, I see people jumping on. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Can everyone hear me okay? Comment in the chat if you're able to hear me okay. Let's see. Yes. All right. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday with us. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, <laughs> I see everybody commenting. Well, welcome to Creative Deals 101. This is your virtual boot camp summit. My name is Deanna Britt. I am the owner of Law Clerk On Demand. Um, I am your local list provider, um, your number one list provider, if I don't say so myself. Um, this is a super group that is um, or a subgroup under South Atlanta RIA. South Atlanta RIA is a real estate investor association here in Georgia. I know we have some attendees that are um, not even in the state of Georgia, but I think most folks are from Georgia. Can y'all check in and tell me where y'all are from? I see some South Atlanta RIA family in the comments. A lot of people are popping on. Where are you guys located? Houston, Texas is in here. That's all right. New York. Atlanta people. Hey, Atlanta people. We got some good weather today. Hey, y'all. Powder Springs. Hey. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm not even going to hold you. At 12, 15, we're going straight, straight into it. Um, our first speaker is going to be uh, Justin Ship and Jacquez Pierre. Um, I'm not sure if they're together, but though, if not, Jacquez will pop on. Um, but we are going to get started. Um, but we'll use this time to just tell you a little bit about what's going on. So again, um, Law Clerk On Demand is a list provider. We pull lists from the courthouse every 30 days, fresh information, lists such as probates, evictions, code violations, divorce, you name it. Um, so that's what my company does. And we are a vendor for South Atlanta RIA. So basically, usually um, I'm at my table at a South Atlanta RIA meeting, which happens the first Wednesday of every month. And on the first Wednesday of every month, you have the opportunity to hear from various speakers. And in fact, a lot of the speakers that you are hearing today, just about all of them, um, have spoken at South Atlanta RIA and they are teachers under South Atlanta RIA. They also teach in their own programs, which I'm sure they'll share with you today. Okay, hey, Justin. Um, so we are going to get started in just a few minutes. We'll probably just start right now because I want to make sure each speaker has enough time. The way that we'll do it housekeeping wise is if you have a question, put it in the chat. Let's, let's, I guess the way we'll do it is if you have a question specifically for the person who is speaking, let's start with that person. And then, um, general questions will be answered from 2.30 to 3.00. Um, Brandon Wigley is handling the um, the general question portion, um, but as far as like questions, let's say when Justin is speaking, you can direct those to Justin, and I'll catch them in the chat too. Okay, but I think y'all, this is gonna be good. Justin, are you ready? Let me unmute you. I'm trying to get you to get off phone so we can get Justin. Justin. Hey, sorry, uh, we're quite not ready yet. We were just. Getting Getting ready. Okay. You got quiz uh, screwed up and got on a phone call right before we got <laughs> Okay, I'll give y'all like five more minutes. I'm going to tell these folks about South Atlanta Rhea and then just give me a thumbs up when you're ready, okay? All right, sounds good. Okay, Thank cool. you. Okay. All right, guys. So South Atlanta Rhea, um, as I mentioned, is a uh, 
Sorry, my nose is itching. Um, so South Atlanta Rhea is a real estate investor association. And Stacy would want me to tell you about all of the benefits for joining. So first of all, South Atlanta RIA falls under uh, the national RIA, which means that you get discounts in things such as, um, okay, thank you for that note. You, you get discounts on things such as uh, Home Depot, um, office supplies, all kinds of things, which are all on SouthAtlantaRIA.com. So you can go on SouthAtlantaRIA.com and you can read all the benefits of joining the RIA. Another thing that you can do is actually, um, you can see all of the subgroups, all of the super groups. So this particular group, Creative Deals 101, was created specifically to address the strategy of getting a property using a creative financing technique, okay? So whether that's subject to lease options, um, owner financing, you are able to use that strategy um, to get a hold of that house. And a lot of people do not understand it. So I was given the task to facilitate the group and find the speakers that are actually using um, this technique every day. So these people are really doing these deals here in Georgia. Okay. And then the other portion of my group is all about real estate marketing because I teach that course for South Atlanta Rhea. So that's just one group, but there are some other groups like Airbnb, rentals, wholesaling, um, we just got a mobile home group. So if you join the RIA, you can go to all of these groups for free, okay? So if you want to join the RIA, if you're here in Atlanta or you wanna join virtually um, and you want access to the webinars, there's even a feature where you can literally ask Stacy Rossetti, who is the founder, questions once a month. You can fire off as many questions as you can handle <laughs> via webinar um, with Stacy, who is a seasoned coach and real estate investor. You even get that benefit as well as masterminds. If you're interested in joining the RIA, just text the word RIA to the same number you text to register for this. So you'll text REIA and you'll get the link to join the RIA. Sound good, y'all? All right. It looks like Justin Ship is in here twice, or is that Jacquez? <laughs> All right, so Jacquez and Justin Ship are queued up and ready to go. Someone has given us a, um, someone said there's an issue with the audio. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me okay? Let me know in the chat. Yes? Okay. So maybe that person might have to turn their volume up with love. Bless your heart. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bless your heart. Turn your volume up now. Okay, I thought something was wrong. <laughs> okay, all right, so everybody got everything? Okay, cool. And also, listen, if you are on Instagram, which I know that you are, right? Go on Instagram and you can follow Law Clerk On Demand. That's the name of my company. I'll put it in the chat as well. Follow me on Instagram, Law Clerk On Demand. We're Law Clerk On Demand on Facebook. The same for South Atlanta Rhea. All of these folks are on Instagram as well. Um, so if you want to keep in touch with these people or myself, that's how you do it. I think I have done all my housekeeping. Jacquez and Justin, are y'all ready? Okay, so the way this will work is I'm going to let them take over the webinar. I'm gonna turn my camera off when you see me pop on. That's my polite way of saying you over time. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, y'all. Um, I will now give you the ability to teach. Let me unmute you guys. Justin, you there? Got questions yeah, you there. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. awesome. Uh, let me know if you record or anything like that. We're going to have a little bit of 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 a it was kind of being distorted on my phone. Uh, but anyways, I'm Justin. This is Jaquez. We're both with uh, Chaotic Real Estate Solutions. Um, so today we're going to talk to you all about a couple of deals we've done in the last, let's say, six months or so. Um, we kind of have recently started moving toward doing more and more subject twos. Um, 
there's a lot of people that skip out on these deals because they don't think there's enough equity there and they ended up just walking away from them, like, hey, we can't make you an offer that makes sense. And then we come in there and we scoop them up like candy. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we've been doing a lot of these lately. Uh, I think last month we did three or five, three to five somewhere. And then the month before we did like two or three as well. Uh, this month we have two, I think, right? Yeah, two of them this month. So, I mean, a lot of people are there skipping out on these deals and, and we come in and get them and we can still, you can still wholesale subject to, so you just got to know how to structure them correctly. So that's what we're going to talk to you about. Um, first and foremost, um, probably the easiest way to find subject twos is through the foreclosure process. These people are about to lose their homes. They don't really have uh, many options available to them. Most of them think that the only way that they can, uh, the only thing they can do is either file bankruptcy or just walk away and get foreclosed on. Um, and that's simply not true. So, um, do you want to talk about any specific deal first or do you want to, uh, no, I just want to make sure, um, how many people are in the chat are actually familiar with subject twos? So I'm not sure if you want to go ahead and break uh, down. Yeah. yeah like maybe what, break down how to do it. Yeah. Like what, what exactly it is. Um, so if you're not familiar with subject twos, please just type a quick no. So I could kind of just get a quick, um, okay. You are no, no, no. All right, we no. got more no's than yeses, so. Okay, all right, perfect. So, uh, but in a sense, what is subject to, right? Um, subject to is just another way of the purchase a home, right? Uh, most people don't know that you can purchase a home in five different ways, right? Um, and subject to is one of those options. Um, in essence, what it means is that you're taking the Uh oh, it's working. Switch, so it's it says phone. it's working. Okay, it's back now. Okay, we're good. Okay, all right. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Man, the Wi-Fi over here sucks. <laughs> all right, perfect, perfect. So, like I was saying, subject two is basically you taking over a property subject to existing finance and or liens, right? Um, so pretty much. Uh, there's a security deed. Typically, when you purchase a home, there's a security deed and there's a warranty deed, right? If you go through a traditional bank, the bank secures their their money against the security deed. So it gives them the ability to close and take back the property and make missing payments. The warranty is transferred over to the homeowner, and that gives them rights of, rights of the property. Subject to what we're doing is that we're transferring, we're transferring over that warranty deed to us, the investors, and that security deed stays with whoever has their money tied to it. And so whenever, like, you could, there's HOA, you could take over property subject to an HOA lien because lien is secured against the security deed, right? Um, and so what you're doing from there is if there's a mortgage in place, you're telling the homeowners, hey, um, this is what exactly what we're doing. Um, we'll be taking over title to your property and we'll be making your mortgage payments on your behalf, right? That's exactly what you say. On their behalf, you'll be making their mortgage payments. Um, uh, so typically it's like, it's, there's well, a lot the people that usually go for these are people who don't want to deal with their mortgage anymore. Right. Um, I've got it worded into our contracts, um, that if we, the way that we put these people at, at ease is cause you know, there's, there's a couple of clauses. There's a do on sell clauses that, um, most mortgages have, I think 99% of mortgages have the do on sell clause, right? Um, but banks are not in the business of owning real estate in the business of making money. Um, there's certain ways to go around with clauses like placing the property on land trust. Very complicated. Um, but the easiest way would be an LLC. Yeah, LLC is as well too. To um, I've heard, I've actually heard from another investor uh, that they, what they do is that they send a letter to the bank saying this is what we're doing and they send, the, they send that payment and pretty much basically they're setting a precedent. So if the bank ever comes back and says, hey, like we're calling the dual sale clause, well, you've been taking, basically they'll go back to court and say, hey, you've been taking our money for this long, so you set a precedent that you're okay with the transaction. So there's no reason why you should be doing this now, right? Um, we haven't really started doing that process. We got it worded. Uh, we'll typically place a property in the trust. Um, like I'll bring up an example of last year. Here's a HUD statement uh, from last year. Um, I did a flip. I, I flipped the subject to deal. Um, I was 19 at the time. Uh, 
So I placed it at placed it in a trust. I called it the one four one Dogwood Court Dallas Dallas Georgia Trust. I don't think you guys can see that. This is a HUD statement, but I'll just go through that deal. Um, so with that deal, uh, lady's mortgage was about one hundred and eleven thousand dollars. She had two liens in place. Um, I had given her two thousand dollars at closing. Took over title. Um, put in twenty thousand dollars that I borrowed from my aunt, because I didn't have it at the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, put in $20,000, I did a lot of the work myself, a lot of the work myself, right? Um, and then resold it for 170, right? Um, so I was all in about 130 um, as well too. Uh, I could have wholesale that subject to deal um, for like an extra like four grand on top, but I wanted to maximize the profits. It was actually pretty good because um, the home values, What you're okay. explaining is over my head. Right, so here, let's put it in layman's terms real quick. <clears throat> so for the beginners out there that don't understand what subject two is and haven't been doing this a while, what we're ex essentially doing is just taking over somebody's mortgage. So if someone owes, you know, $100,000 on their house and their payments, $1,000 a month, we're telling them, hey, if you're, walk if you're willing to just walk away from this house and not sell it for cash, we will just take over your mortgage and make the mortgage payment on your behalf and you get to just walk away from it. So that's the layman's terms. You're literally just taking over somebody's mortgage and you can either assign that mortgage to somebody else for a fee or you can payments on, the, on their behalf, keep it as a rental or you can okay. potentially. Uh, uh, one second, one second. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. I actually like the question. So Shanti, I just see the, the question yeah, that you asked. Um, so how do you profit from paying the mortgage but not technically owning the property? Um, you do own the property. You take, Shanti, you take over title to the property. That property is yours. So you gain all the equity in that property as well too. So if the mortgage is $111,000 and you take it over, the seller gets $1,000 at closing and the house is worth one seventy. dollars well, you have about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in equity that is yours. What you have titled that is your equity, and that's how you can profit from the deal. Um, or See, you could rent it out as well, too. In, in basics, you own the property. You just don't own the mortgage. The mortgage is still in the previous owner's name. But you're, you have a moral and an obligation to pay that mortgage because that's what you agreed on on the contract. You have to pay her mortgage off yeah, before you can do anything. Exactly. But, yeah. It's not a loan assumption. You're not assuming a loan. You are paying on their behalf. 100%. You are not assuming a loan. Um, and then also, so it's how do you market for this deals and how do you find buyers for this as well too. Um, so typically when we're marketing, we pull a lot of pre foreclosures. That's typically our go-to for subject two deals, right? Um, you just got to be quick with it. I mean, I'll be honest. We've done some risky, <laughs> some risky ones. I think the last one we did was, um, how about that guy? Kevin's no Kevin's Kevin's Jesus Christ. We hit, we got his house the day before it go to auction. We didn't have title yet. And we reinstated his mortgage. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have title yet. We reinstated his mortgage. It's risky. But when it comes to the pre foreclosure situation, um, we got a word in our contract with about, about that it was, money. It was about building reports. Yeah, yeah building reports as well, too. Once you build that report, the seller let them know that you're a trustworthy company, a trustworthy person. Um, and then you get a word into our contract states that, hey, like, Mr. Seller, like, if we miss one payment, you could take back. If we, miss a, if we go 30 days late on a payment, it should be quick. Oh, okay. Um, so, what I mean, like, because their house is up for auction. So you want to make sure you can get the deal done or save. Before. Let's talk about that one that um, that we lost. Um, remember that one in Decatur or no? It was on uh, Larksville or whatever. Uh, the one last month. Yeah, Lilburn. Yeah. We, so last month we went and talked to a guy in uh, was it, you said Lilburn? Lilburn. Loganville. Loganville. It was Loganville. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Loganville. Loganville. This nice two hundred thousand dollar house in Loganville. Uh, guy was going to a pre foreclosure or he was going to the auction in like a week. Right. So he went to talk to him. We was trying to, you know, let him understand that, you know, in a week he's going to be getting kicked out of his house. The bank's going to be foreclosing on it. Well, he was like, well, I got to talk to my wife. I got to think about it for a few days. And we're like, well, don't take too long because if you come to the line, you know, we're not going to have time to uh, pay off the, uh, or pay off the um, reinstatement of the loan and keep it from going to auction. 
So what ended up happening was he waited till literally two days before the auction and we called the bank to get payoff and reinstatement. And what happened was the bank never sent it. And so we was not able to secure it before the auction and it ended up going to auction. So what he means by you have to be quick is a lot of these deals that you're getting as subject twos are usually pre foreclosure deals where time is of the essence. So you have to move quick and the seller has to understand that they have to move quick as well. Mm -hmm. The banks don't care, don't care at the, they already have it set for auction, so they're not going to move quick. So it's up to us and it's up to the seller to make sure they're on top of their stuff and making sure they're getting the stuff done quickly. That way we can save it from, uh, save it from getting foreclosed on. Yeah, so, so just a little yeah. um, piece of advice about that. I'm, I'm going to go back to the, the um, topic about how do we market for them, how do we um, uh, market for buyers as well too. But also, um, it, when you're dealing with banks and, well, in a, so in a situation of um, pre-foreclosure process, um, if you have a lender or foreclosure attorney who's like not responding to you or giving that reinstatement, by law, they have to provide the seller with the reinstatement. Um, if they do not, it's a potential lawsuit that you could file, and it's called potential harm to bar, bar, um, borrower. That's a that's 100% against the law. The lenders cannot do that. The lender in this situation was doing that. Um, we're still trying to figure out if there's even a case or not because they submitted it at 445. When we asked for it, three, we asked for it four days in advance. They submitted it at 445 the day before auction, right? They knew what they were doing. Um, so that, it, that irritated us very, 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 um, but going back to this question about how do we market for buyers, right? Um, so Can you okay. hear us now? Can you guys hear us now? Yeah, you're back. You're back. Oh. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, thank you for that, Carlton. So, as so, we're still growing and we're still going hard, right? Um, so, as the coronavirus is um popping down and the economy's about to take a huge hit, um, we're changing a lot of strategies. Um, we're hiring acquisition guys right now. We're bringing on three, and their strategies, um. One, right, uh, just for future reference, um, any, I just want to give a little advice about that. Um, what we're doing from now, any properties, um, we're not going past 60% ARV. Um, our offers are not going past 60% or even the resale value. Uh, we're not going past 60%. I know typically we could push for 75, and we're not doing that in this economy. Um, okay, if the seller wants to purchase a new home, how long will the loan stay in their name? Um, so I'll be honest, there are lenders that you could structure it, um, who know how to like, basically in a sense, there are lenders that you could find that will, that you explain the situation to them on the seller's behalf, that they will know that the seller's not responsible for that mortgage. So what they'll do is they'll discount that DTI by 75%. You, you, what you do is you get the lender to structure it almost like you're rent, they're renting out the property. Yeah. So the. So the mortgage, even though it's still in their name, they're basically going to squash it because it's going to be basically like by seventy five percent. They're not going to yeah. they're not going to take a hold of it, but by seventy five percent, they'll just their DTI. So if you go go out and search some lenders, and I can't recommend any now because what's going on in the economy now, a lot of lenders are like getting tight. So honestly, we're still looking for new lenders as well too. But I know there are lenders who know these processes as well. Um, but also, so touching back to that, we're not going past 60% ARV. Also, um, we're pushing a lot for subject twos and owner financing. And our buyers, we're marketing for buyers for that as well, too, through Facebook, um, Alantarias, because basically the incentive is, is that as the virus or as the economy, we're, as we're going to a recession, uh, people were incentivizing investors to get into these income producing properties or these these rentals that would not be on their credit or yeah, on their credit report. Too. Yeah, low with the entry. low entry fee, right? 
Um, so that's what we're pushing for. So, hey, like we could get you this property, you can rent it, mortgage is 800 bucks, you can rent it out for 1,000, 1,200, 1,100. 11, 1, um, we're excellent for $10,000 down. Boom, you get in, you cash flow, 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Um, that's a good ROI. Um, and they can rehab, they hold on to equity as well too. Uh, sorry. So that we just answered. that um, I know investors who have or and they said they had success when it came to that another thing too guys um, if for whatever reason look for one I've talked to a couple of our closing attorneys and it's honestly pretty rare for banks to do the uh, do on sale clause um, Eugene Taylor at Chalker and Chalker asked him about this and he said he's only he's did about 300 subject to transactions in the last 10 years and only six of them have been do uh, have have called the loan due so you've got a pretty good chance of that not happening but if it does happen you have about 60 days to buy the property or refinance out or or transfer title back to the owner so there's a lot of things you can end up doing you could partner with the owner you could even uh, refinance the property and I have lenders that will refinance subject to deals and they understand how those work. So there's all kinds of things we can do. And if there's enough equity in the property, that's not gonna be a problem. Now, if it's low equity, you're gonna have to probably get a little bit creative or maybe pull out a second, second mortgage or something like that. But uh, there is other options. So don't get worried that that's gonna happen and you're gonna have to freak out and have to pay it back in one day or something. You have time to figure that out and talk to the banks about it. Yeah. Um, and then as far as what the difference is between subject to and owner financing, owner financing is typically when the owner actually owns the, the property free and clear and they're financing it to you. Like you're going to be paying them a payment every month uh, to take over the house. Uh, subject to is they're walking away from it and you're going to be paying the bank directly. Uh -huh. So the difference is. I want to touch on that real quick. I want to touch on that real quick. Um, <laughs> so. Subject to an owner finance, exactly what Justin was saying is that typically the homeowner does, is pretty much free and clear and you structure a mortgage between you and the seller and they go on the security deed and the terms are what you guys agree to. Um, and you could, sh you could get as creative as you want. Mr. Seller, if you want a million dollars for your property, I give you a dollar for a million months, right? Um, <laughs> pretty much, right? But I want to bring up something where we did, uh, well, last December, we did a subject to and owner finance in the same deal. And then we wholesale that deal, right? Uh, I brought the HUD statement for that. Let me see. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Yeah, so it was pretty It was pretty interesting. Pretty, I got really, really creative. Um, so I had been going back and forth with these sellers for about a three months. The wife, she was a stickler. I, I, had, I had a hedge fund make an offer. They were at 115, I was at 108. Um, she wanted 115, right? And then we were going back for three months. And then finally, one time I was at her door. Um, they didn't have a phone. So every single time I, I needed to go talk to them, I had to go drive to the house, right? So if you want to get a deal, you got to go hustle. And it's like, you got to go hustle in this business. Train up hustle. Um, and so we had a conversation. She's like, well, she's like, I've always been open to owner finance. And I was like, I wish you told me that earlier. We could save ourselves three months, right? So I was like, what do you want? And so she was like, she was like, well, I'll take like 120, right? Um, okay, I was like, okay, cool. So this is how we structured it. So she had a mortgage in place. Her mortgage balance was $39,000. Um, and her, her monthly payments were $500 as well too, right? So essentially she wanted to walk away with $78,000 at the sale price of 120. So what we did is I, I structured it to where we will be taking over the property subject to and then we structured a second lien, a second mortgage to her with no monthly payments with a balloon payment of $78,000 at the end of two years. So she got that 120 number. And then I wholesaled it to my guy, Paul, for $8,000. So, and, but, but she got, so, and, but he brought $16,000 to the table. She got, the homeowner got 6,500. And after closing costs and everything, I walked away with $8,000. And so basically I was able to give the homeowner their number that they were wanting and still get the deal that most people would have walked away from because she was not budgeting on her price for nothing 
for nothing. She was like budget on a price. Yeah, um, so that was very, very, very creative. Uh, but like I was saying, owner finance, typically they, they usually have the property free and clear, but you can owner finance a deal if they do have a lien in place. I will say that. So. Well. Owner finance and you structure the terms. That's, that's between you and the, you, the seller becomes a bank and you guys agree on whatever you want. So if it's 500, 600, 1% interest rate, 2% interest rate, no interest, a balloon payment, no balloon payment, 2015, you can literally structure it any way you want. Um, and there, once you have it worded in the contract, the attorneys, uh, Eugene's pretty good at it. Uh, he'll structure for you as far as um, getting it locked up and getting those terms worked out and getting that, that lien in, in place as well too. And so when you're talking about how we find and train for acquisitions, so when it comes to finding and training for acquisitions, we placed out job ads. Um, I reached out to the guys we're hiring our people. I used to do, do car sales, um, bringing on people that work that work with the dealership that I know that are really good at sales. Um, when it comes to acquisitions, it's a sell. Like once you realize that this wholesale business investment, it's a sales business. So you really want to push for sales guys or sales saleswomen or sales team for acquisitions. Well, people with sales skills who are very personable, good at talking to people. Um, strong closers, very direct. And then when it comes to training, um, we do a very, very, we're doing a very, very intensive training. Um, uh, we're paying a lot of money for them to get trained. We've got a lot of courses um, and we're training them us uh, structuring different deals and then also make sure that we get different calls as well too. But that's more of the advanced stuff. I want to go to get touch back to it. So if anybody has any more like the entry level questions, uh, let me know. And Carlton, if you want to reach out to us, we can talk to you more in depth about specific things if you, if you want to. Um, I want to talk about just real quickly about, you know. Oh, um, answer. oh um, when do we um, refile the more, that property? The one I was talking about, two years. They're going to refinance the lady yeah. out, out of board of two years. A whiteboard example will help explain these deals for me. Do you um, want to do a whiteboard? Because I should do that whiteboard. We'll get yeah, it right at the office. that real quick, I guess. You know, put that on the table. And then, uh, or do you release that small one? Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Real quick, I'll talk about a, um, a, a quick subject too. Uh, like how a typical subject two would work. All right. So you got a, you got a property. Here's, here's a good example. Here's what I did a few months ago. And this is actually a house I'm living in currently now that I picked up subject to. A good friend of mine um, was wanting to sell his house and he bought it for 140 two years ago. 140. His payment, uh, his payment was $1,000 a month, and he owes one thirty three left on the mortgage. When we went to get the appraisal done for his house, uh, it appraised for like one thirty nine. So he went to sell it with a realtor, and the realtor was like, hey, look, you're going to have to bring like $10,000 to the table, and um, you, you know, you're, you're going to have to pay to, to get this deal sold. Well, he was just, he said, well, well screw that. I'm not going to pay, you know, $10,000 just to sell my house. I'll just let a bank foreclose on it. He was not behind on his payments whatsoever. He just wanted out of his mortgage because he was moving. I bought his house subject to the existing financing with $0 down. He literally just walked away and I moved right on in. I then sold my house. I walked into his house. So how I, how I structured this to keep the dual sale clause from getting, uh, called is I set it up into an LLC. So the the property address was 18 Castle Court. So I made it 18 Castle LLC. And what that does is it kind of blinds you from being the buyer. Because if the banks go through and they look at it and they say, James is the owner and now Justin's on title, it throws up a red flag. So if, if, if you put it in an LLC, what happens is the bank sees us in the LLC now. They think maybe the owner just just started an LLC and just transferred it over to his LLC. So it keeps them from, from looking further into it. Now, that's not a foolproof structure, but it definitely keeps the numbers a lot better. And banks usually don't, don't look into that too much often. Um, yeah, we use Eugene Taylor at Chalker and Chalker quite a bit um, for our closings. Um, there's very few closing attorneys around the Atlanta area that actually will do subject twos. A lot of them get kind of worried about doing them. There is a couple. Uh, uh, you have Nancy Wazdeen yeah. and Stephen and Stephen that will both, they'll both structure those deals for you. So what, 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 what I like about subject two is you can, you're allowed to buy, you're able to creatively structure deals that most people would walk away from, or most people would see as not being a good deal. So what I like about, 
the subject too is people that have literally no equity in their property and they think they have no way out and other investors look at it and they're like, Oh, that's not a good deal. We're still able to structure them and make money off of them. And you can too. So all you got to do is kind of dig a little bit deeper into how this stuff works and get acclimated with it. And it's really not as hard as people think it is. I mean, Eugene Taylor is helped us uh, a lot. Hold on one second. Sorry. Um, so if you guys need any documents for it, um, please email me at that email. Um, there's a lot of, there's a couple, you don't have to pay 1K a month. For this yes. Yes. You have to take over his mortgage. Yeah. So you have to make his payment is a thousand dollars a month. I decided just to take over his house and I'm making a thousand dollars a month now. Yeah. So, okay. Touching back. Um, be ethical when it comes to this, please. I, uh, I texted it in the chat. Just scroll up a little bit for our email. Um, please be ethical with this, right? Um, they're trusting you to not mess up their credit because if they go through a foreclosure, it messes up their credit report for seven years. They're trusting you, right? If you feel like you cannot make those payments, don't do the deal. Don't like, just don't do the deal, right? Um, I haven't worded that the seller takes out the title to property if you miss if you miss thirty days, right? And it's the same thing as well too when we wholesale to one of the buyers. We only we only wholesale to our trusted buyers. We don't just wholesale to anybody. And also worded in our contract that if they miss miss a payment, we take back the property as well too. So be very 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 ethical. If you cannot make those payments and you know you cannot, do not. Um, but yeah, y'all do got to realize y'all can get sued if you decide, if you tell them that you're going to make those payments on time every month. And you don't, they can come back and sue you. Yeah, so that's a huge lawsuit. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the payment. What you want to do is make sure that if the house is a thousand dollar payment a month, what can I rent it for? Can I rent it for eleven hundred, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a month? And that's why why I moved, why I bought my buddy James's property is because I was able to take it over, with, even though it has no equity. The cash flow. If I decided to move out of the house and keep it as a rental, I can rent it for thirteen hundred dollars a month, and the mortgage is only a thousand dollars a month. Uh, yeah. So we, yeah, we do have a cover your ass letter. Uh, so, um, um, also, um, also, uh, when making payments, um, so typically what we'll do is we'll have the seller at closing, call the bank and tell them a cave to pull. They're going to start pulling payments from a different account, which is our account. Mm -hmm. Um, and also we have them give, give us online access as well too. Uh, we don't ever trust the sellers to make the payments because listen, if they're a foreclosure, they were making, don't trust them with making the payments. Please don't trust them with making the payments. They were making the payments in the first place. Just like, so make sure you keep track of those payments. So make sure they, that you at least get online account, online access, and then also a POA. That's what I'm saying. If you guys email me, I will, I will send you a POA. Okay, we got five minutes. All right, let's do um, this example real quick. Yeah, I'll do it. And we'll send you a POA that, that you need to Here, sorry. I'll hold it up for you. Yeah, do it. See it? Can you guys see this? It's gonna be backwards, dude. I mean, I don't know how. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. All right, so this one might be a little bit difficult. You might have to add. Oh, it's not backwards. It's not backwards. Not, okay. Yeah, not backwards. Okay. Okay. Can y'all see that? Yeah, that's good. Right. Okay. So you can do this real quick. All right. So this is uh, the one that I structured with the owner finance. That's what we're gonna talk about. Uh, so the property ARV was 160, mortgage balance was 39,000, the pity, um, principal, insurance, taxes, and interest, $550 a month. The market rent, $1,200 monthly. Definitely good cash flow situation, right? Um, seller wants 120, excuse the bad handwriting. Um, so they wanted $120,000, right? Um, so I'm just going to do, run the, the quick math and, uh, yeah. All right. So as far as the down payment for the seller, they wanted 6,500, which is, so 6,500, which is taken off of this, uh, this price right here. So pretty much what I did was took off the 120, well, started off with the 120, Subtracted to 6,500 and then, and then subtracted to 39,000 as well too. So it left me with a balance that the seller would walk away with $74,000. Oh, hold on. Okay, moving closer. 
Did my friend make any money when we took a, okay, is that better? All right, perfect, right? So the seller wanted, wants to walk away with, walk away, whatever, this is horrible. Uh, 74K. So here's what we did. So we took the $74,000 that, that they wanted and so we took it over subject two, which means we were going to start to make fees payments on her behalf. Um, took over the thirty-nine thousand dollars, and then we gave her sixty-five hundred dollars at closing. And then we structured a second lien with the seller's name, and that was attached to the security deed of the property. So basically, if um, my guy who has the title, so we transferred the title to my guy because we assigned the contract. I signed the contract for eight thousand dollars. So my guy currently has title. So whenever he goes to sell the property or refinance within two years, um, the seller gets $74,000. So the first lien gets paid off first and then the leftover amount goes to the seller. And so all in, they're about um, 114. And so at an ARV of 160, you can refinance, banks will refinance you at 80%. Before the coronavirus, right? This is way before the coronavirus. I'm not <laughs> sure what's going on at this point, but 80%, 80% of 160 is about 120. So you can easily refinance. Um, I don't know about, he has two years left on this, so maybe something, something maybe we'll be in an upward for comedy by the so, time. Yeah, also talk about, so all in the, the end buyer. Buyer, buyer all in was in, in the property for $16,000. cash flow, how much money? He is cash flowing about six hundred six hundred fifty dollars a month. You see why that's so incredible? That's fifteen thousand versus what maybe some people might spend like eighty grand to get six hundred. Oh, so pity. Pity stands for principles, insurance, taxes, and interest. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so make sure we yeah. ask the seller, like, hey, Mr. Seller, not what's your more monthly, like, what is your pity? What's everything all in cost as well, too? And this is why subject twos are so, uh, like, like, sought after, really, especially when you're going through a recession, is because you are you have a very low entry point to get really good cash flow. You're not buying any houses for for this, for $16,000 and making $600 a month. Mm -hmm. So now you can. It don't matter what the mortgage is, it matters what the cash flow is. Yeah, That's exactly. What investors are going for is what's my return on investment on that 16 grand I'm putting in. And you get the equity as well, too, so you can refinance it and then get your money back and then still start to come down. Or you can just let it, you can leave, the, you can hold it long term. And so, since if let's just say the seller had a really good interest rate, they bought the house at a really good interest rate, you could get the root interest rate, hold that equity, and just pay it down. How much does that house need to repairs? Uh, that one, it needed. Honestly, so we just kept, there was, a, there was a tenant already in place, so pretty much all he did was just keep the tenant in place, so he didn't have to repair anything, really. Now, what I like about subject two is, is you're able to help people. Uh, yeah, so the down payments, so when I market the deal, right? Oh, here it comes. Uh -huh. We're about to be done, guys. But as far as the down payment, so when I market the deal, I market for $16,000 down. That will cover the seller's down payment plus my assignment fee and closing costs as well, too. So that's how we're paying down. I'm having my end buyer pay the down payment. Look, guys, if anybody wants to reach out to us, we're more than welcome to talk to y'all more in depth about this. We can y'all can email us or call us. Um, and if, if we need to, we could even set up another Zoom call maybe for this upcoming week and try to do a more in-depth session on this. So if y'all are interested, just just leave your comments or email us and we'll try to see what we can do. Okay. All right, if you have any subject to deals as well, too, just let us know. So uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So if y'all learn, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No I problem. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> they are the real deal. So say your Instagram again. What's y'all's Instagram? It should be chaotic res. Uh, chaotic. Yeah, that's for the business one. Uh, my personal is um here. I'll type it in yeah. for you guys. Okay. Yeah, do um, mine as well. Okay, make sure y'all follow them on Instagram. Follow Law Clerk On Demand as well. Everybody's followers should go up because these people are the real deal, y'all. Okay, thank you guys so much. Um, I will continue to paste your information, but um, you guys can add them on Facebook and all that good stuff. Justin and Jacquez, thank you so much. Okay? Thank you so much, too. Okay, all right.
cool. All right, so now, now, uh, was that good, you guys? Was that good? Tell me in the comments, was it good? I got one minute to make sure y'all are still awake. If it was good, say, yeah. <laughs> if it was amazing, say, oh, yeah. I really see y'all comments. Thank you. <laughs> I had way too much coffee, but listen. This is the benefit of joining South Atlanta Rhea, y'all, and, and coming to the super groups. These people are the real, um, let me see. Okay, there we go. Okay, these people are the real deal. They're really doing deals here. They are located here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm so grateful to even know them. Just a couple reminders, housekeeping. So if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A box so we can see it. If we miss your question, because I know there's a lot and they only have about 30 minutes, at the end, at 2.30, we're gonna go back through and make sure all those questions are um, <laughs> Eddie, they're going crazy. They're going crazy in the comments. They're ready for you, Mr. Transaction Engineer. Okay, well, let me be quiet. Put your questions in the Q&A. Follow these people on Instagram. I'm Law Clerk On Demand. And um, okay, that's it. I'm going to mute myself. Eddie, you ready? Let me unmute you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. How you doing? Good, good, good. And one more thing, you guys. I know some people asked about contracts and stuff like that. Um, remember, any contract that you get, you need to run past an attorney in your state and your area. And these folks are on here giving you general information. This isn't like legal advice. So make sure you run it back. <laughs> right. Y'all are going to hear this disclaimer after every speaker. So even if something sounds different for, to you, make sure you know the law in your state. All right. I think that's it. Text the word REIA if you want to join South Atlanta Rhea. Thank you for appreciating my disclosure. Y'all know that's what I do. Okay. All right. I'm gone. All right. Ed, take it over. Saw you, Ed. Thank you, Ms. Britt. How you doing today? Uh oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So the way this works is I'm going to jump off and you can just take over. And then if you check the Q&A box, that's where all the questions are. I'm going to clear it out so you know the questions are for you. All right, let's rock and roll, baby. Okay, cool. What's up, guys? So I hope you guys are ready to get your learning on. Now, you got to be a, you got to be teachable in order to go to the next level. And it all, it all goes to your mindset. What are you listening to? Who are you hanging around? All that stuff matters, guys. If you want to turn this to a real business where it pays you every day, every month, then you got to shift gears. You got to change your mindset. You got to become a different person. And that goes with self-help, self-development. But a little bit about myself. I'm Mr. Transaction Engineer, Eddie Raymond. I got in real estate back in 05. Um, got a mentor. My mentor, well, well, let me reverse gears. I got into real estate in 2005. I was driving a forklift, right? So my mom paid $5,000 for me to go to a seminar. I think I was like 20, in the 20s or something, 24, 25, to go to this seminar. But I, I needed to take off from my, from my job for about um, two or three days. And my boss said, hey, you can't take off. You don't have any days off. So I'm like, oh man, what am, what am I going to do? So, you know, I, hey, I rolled the dice, guys. I rolled the dice, went to my first seminar, and right there on the stage, I was so excited and so hyped up. Keep in mind at the time, I had three kids so, and no job. So I'm like, man, I got to make it happen. I got to make it happen. So I was fired up. When I got to the first seminar, I was fired up. I already had all my leads. They called one of my leads on the stage. It was a subject to deal. When they, hey, back then we had fax machines, so this was back in 05. So we had to take the contract, go and fax it. The seller signed the contract. While I'm at this four day seminar, I got it back. Guys, first deal subject to. Gave the lady $2,000. She wasn't even behind on her payments or anything. She just had two properties. Her and her husband just got married, so they had an extra property, and she wanted to sell. She was a motivated seller. So we signed her up, hey, and the rest is history. So now I was in the business, you know, about two, two and a half years. Man, I was a wholesaling junkie. Everything I got my hands on, I'm wholesaling, 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 wholesaling. 
Now, I did manage to keep three properties, but it kind of blows, blows your mind. Because I did, the first deal was a subject too, right? But 30 days later, I did a, a wholesale deal and made 15000 So that really, like, just took me to another level. So I was focused on more wholesaling, but when that market crashed at the end of 07, guys, hey, it was a different experience. Different experience. By me being in the business since 05, it crashed at the end of 07. Luckily, I had just flipped a probate deal. Hey, shout out to Deanna. She got some good leads also. <laughs> I just closed on a probate deal, guys, for 58000 Right before the market crashed, if anybody from me with Moreland Avenue, it's over there by, um, what's that? Little Five Points area, probate lead, perfect deal. So I made 58000 Two months later, the market crashed. Now, I feel sorry for the guy who bought the house because he got, you know, he paid too much. But at the time, the market was good, but it crashed. So once the market crashed, I quickly realized, hey, I don't have enough income coming in. I only have three properties, cash flowing 300 apiece. That's only $900, guys. But one of my good friends, he had 50 subject to properties, cash flowing, 50 of them. His life wasn't affected a bit, guys. And so I quickly realized I need to change gears. So, you know, we started buying properties, more subject tools during the crash, and we killed, we, man, short sales, dominated short sales. We did about 300 short sales. So short, short sales turned into the new wholesaling. And a short sale, for those of you guys who don't understand what short selling is, is you're getting a property, you say have a house worth 100000 it need repairs, 20, 30,000. You present your facts to the bank. You know, they're gonna come out and do a BPO or appraisal. Come out and give their, their opinion of what the property is worth. You just gotta make sure you're there to help, you know, point out everything because you want the discount. And, you know, you just negotiate with the bank. Usually though, whatever that appraisal or that um, BPO agent come back in, whatever number that is, that's what you gotta stick to. So you wanna make sure you're there to influence that. So. We did a lot of those. And we were flipping most, most of them to like foreign and foreign buyers, guys. See, they knew when the market crashed, guys, you, you go hard, you go heavy. Now is the time to get excited and go hard. It's gonna be a lot of motivated sellers. Unfortunately, you know, I'm sorry for the people that have to sell on the financial needs, but guys, this is where a lot of money is made, guys. A lot of money is made in recessions. So you want to hold on to some of these properties. You want to take them over subject to. It's going to be a lot of more um, wholesaling pretty houses. You know, we do the whole business over here. TE Academy, we do the whole business, guys. Wholesaling, wholesale lease options, sandwich lease options. Man, you name it, all of it. But guys, it's time. It's time to crank up your marketing, guys. But first of all, you got to learn more strategies. If you're just wholesaling, the wholesaling may dry up if the market continue to go down because the banks are going to start cutting the credit lines like they did in the 07, 08, 09. They cut the credit, they cut the money in half. So we're hoping that it doesn't get that bad, but if it does, you want to have more than one strategy, guys. You get that. that is so important. And also, guys, if you get into this buying these houses subject to, to avoid the due on sale clause, put your properties into a land trust. Put your houses into a land trust. We have the documents online. Guys, you do not want your house just out there. It's just out there. Anybody sues you, guess what? A lien is going against your property. So, so you put in a land trust or either, like the guy said before me, you can put in an LLC also, but the land trust is much quicker. It's just one document and your house is protected. Nobody know who the owner is, guys. That's how you protect your assets. You want to protect your assets and you want to hold on to as many properties as possible, guys, and become financially free. Just think about it. You got 10 subject tools cash flowing, $300 a piece, guys. That's three grand. Oh, I'm sorry, three grand. That's $3,000 a month. You got 20, that's six grand. Your, your expenses are only 4,000. You're financially free. You got six grand coming in every month. Six grand coming in every month. So you want to become financially free. That's the goal in this business. If you're in the business for the long haul. Now, if you just, you know, in here just want to play around with it, 
hey, that's fine. But if you're in for the long haul, guys, hold as many properties as you can, guys. Put them in, hey, put them in on, on lease purchase, have you some tight documents, tight agreements where they're responsible for everything. And guys, go on about your life. I love getting those checks like that in the mail. Well, not in the mail. That's, that's a long time ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the bank account. You know, they're coming in every month. Every month. So become financially free, guys. That is the goal. That is the goal. Hmm, what time it is? 10.54. I guess I'll open up for questioning. Questions? Oh, guys, follow me on YouTube, Mr. Transaction Engineer. Um, IG, Mr. Underscore Transaction Underscore Engineer.com. Facebook, Mr. Transaction Engineer.com. Oh, guys, we also, I'm sorry, Deanna, I think Deanna going to put the, Deanna, I don't know if you put the, the, the um, codes for the links, but we got a couple of courses for you guys, guys. One of them is um, teaching you how to wholesale pretty houses. That means, which is my favorite business. You check out my YouTube channel. You know, I, I like to deal with pretty houses, man. So check out my YouTube channel. But another strategy, guys, if you like the wholesale and you like getting those checks, I guarantee you miss, you're throwing deals away because guess what? You're not doing wholesale lease option. What is a wholesale lease option, Mr. Transaction Engineer? Wholesale lease option, guys, is you putting a pretty house under contract. You're bringing a tenant buyer, somebody who wants to live in the home for a year or two. We, we like to do two-year leases with the owners. But you're just going to find them, locate them a tenant buyer, guys. So say, for example, this is what we tell the homeowner on a pretty house. We're going to pay you first month and a security deposit. We're going to bring you a qualified tenant buyer that will cash your house out within about two years. We're gonna charge them a fee. So we put that property on the contract. So just say three grand, we gonna locate a tenant buyer, somebody who wanna do a lease purchase and live in the house, man, make it theirs. Hey, we go look for them. So say for example, this person has $10,000 down. Bingo, that's our guy. You know, as long as the credit checks out because we wanna to try to get them financed within that time frame. So you wanna run the credit, we got a system that teaches you how to run all that stuff one hit of a button. You can run all the information. And then you want to bring the best qualified person to the, to the seller. And you're out of the deal. So you make seven grand, the homeowner make three grand, and they deal with the tenant buyer. So that's wholesaling pretty houses, which is my, one of my favorites I love. But like I say, guys, I'm a, I'm a, I've been in the game a while, so I'm more focused on cash flow. We, whatever comes through the door, we're going to get paid. Because we're we transaction engineers. So another strategy, guys, if you don't want to be hell, you know, reliable for at least for a subject to, then you may want to do some sandwich lease options where you just stay in the deal. You're leasing the property, right? With the right to sublease it to somebody on a lease purchase, and you're staying in the middle and collecting that monthly spread. So you're giving the homeowner the mortgage payment and you're you're collecting the cash flow so that's just another strategy i know we just i went through a lot of stuff but hey guys become a transaction engineer baby and make it happen man it's it's going to be a flood of deals i'm telling you it's going to be a flood of deals a lot of deals going down and if you guys are dealing with pre foreclosures you're doing subject twos the bank just stopped all foreclosures I, we were talking to a bank on a property we were working on. Guess what? The bank said, hey, whenever this blows over, we'll get back in contact with you. All foreclosure sales have been stopped. So guess what? Now is your time to dig deep and make some deals happen. I'm open up for questioning. Let's go. Hey, can you see your questions? Mr. Transaction Engineer, you see them in the Q&A box? And there were some that jumped up. Um, I will find them for you and read them to you. Let me help you out. So one person said, um, how does someone start? How much money is needed? Well, we got uh, different courses on our site. Go to MrTransactionEngineer.com. The way we teach you guys, and I hope some of my students jump on here, but the way we teach you guys is that 
operate with little of or no money out of your pocket but you will have to invest in your tools guys you know you're going to need a, a good crm system to, to track your leads you're going to need a phone system you're going to need several little things you're going to need and you're also going to need marketing money if you don't have marketing money then guess what you got to pick that phone up baby and make it happen <laughs> nobody else going to make it happen but mm -hmm. you that's good so, that's good so back to uh, get started i think our course is 4.99 or 5.99 just go on our site and check it out we also got a um subject two course we released a couple of days ago so check us out and Dion, did you put it in the um so did yeah y'all just click that link i just put in the chat box i'm doing administrative duties so <laughs> housekeeping i got i'm putting his instagram down there and his website so y'all can check that out if you want to like sit and this is the perfect time to watch a course y'all so y'all can sit and um watch his course and also follow him on in, on instagram mr underscore transaction underscore engineer right Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find any more questions. Oh, you got like six questions, Ed. We're going to be here till midnight. The courses are all digital, guys. They're, they're yes. digital. We don't have that old school stuff, sending you a PDF and out. No, that's over with. <laughs> it's <laughs> digital. It's on a platform called Teachable. So you go on there, guys, learn. All the documents are in there, all the paperwork. Work. We also got a subject to master class, but we're not opening up for that until about a week or so. Okay. All right. So we got a few questions that came in. Um, we got about 10 more minutes before our next speaker. So let's see. Um, so we talked about getting started. Um, with the bank stopping foreclosures, how does this benefit investors? You have more time to negotiate with them because the payments are going to start back. And just because the bank stopped the foreclosure, if you got behind in foreclosure, that means you got some bad financial problems anyway so the same problem is going to exist so it is now just time guys to go in and negotiate okay the same problem is going to re-exist now they may be able it, it depends on what bank because every bank have different programs so i know the bank we was talking about they was talked to they said they may do a forbearance which is take the payments and put it on the back of the loan and start them over fresh another okay. bank said they may just halt it temporarily and modify it so they got options also but the people who's already out of the houses guys mm -hmm. it's a slam dunk Very people good. Want to stay in their houses guys you know if they want to keep their house we ask them do you want to keep your house or sell your house if you want to keep it we'll give you some advice and ways to keep it you want to sell it let's play ball all right let's see we got a few more um what's your favorite marketing strategy um to find sellers which kind of which type of sellers this is um i guess motivated sellers i'm gonna assume well motivated seller guys of course you want somebody to need to sell right now not mm -hmm. next week somebody <laughs> gotta sell now mm -hmm. so guess who you got probate you yeah. got people stuck with houses man it, come on you just left me this piece <laughs> of junk i don't know what to do with this you right. that's how some people feel it so you know, you got to come and save the day. So probate, guys, you can get, hey, there's so many different avenues in probate. Guys, you got um, wholesaling you can do out of probate. You got um, wholesale lease options you can do out of probate. Subject to, they out of here. So you know they don't care about you taking over the mortgage. <laughs> hey, um, what else? It's, it's just so many strategies you can do out of the probate list that you got to work, guys. You got to work. You got to follow up. Don't think this just going to be you send out your, your marketing campaign, boom, you got 100 leads, guys. It's a numbers game. So if you only hit 10 people, and you think you're going to do 10 deals, nah, not in this lifetime. <laughs> but it's a numbers game. So you got to hit a lot of people, guys. And you got to follow up, follow yes. up, follow up, follow up. Most people drop out, though, after the second follow up. So you got to mm -hmm. follow up. And most deals are not made until the third and the eighth contact. Contact, not call just because you call eight times. <laughs> you're not gonna get the deal, deal, guys. Some sellers you gotta work with. You gotta they gotta feel comfortable with you. Especially mm -hmm. some old, you know, older people that are dealing with the probate. Some of them have to feel comfortable with you guys. So you gotta build report with them. Build report and follow up. Build report and follow up. 
Absolutely. All right. And where do you, where do you recommend getting a probate list? <laughs> Be young. She got the best probate <laughs> list in town. I'm serious. <laughs> So if you need a probate list, I hope that you'll go on lawclerkondemand.com and the probate list. Um, the older probate lists are on sale right now. So just um, drop a message and I'll drop the link to get the older list on sale because um, we're going to look out for the cookout. What other questions we got? Oh, and remember, join the RIA by texting REIA to the same number, 67076, to join the RIA. Okay, so... Can you um, explain what a sandwich lease is one more time? And then I think that's the last question. So a sandwich lease, guys, a sandwich lease is when you put a pretty house under contract, right? Your agreement will give you the rights to sublease the property. So, for example, you got a house worth 100000 Mortgage payments of uh, six hundred, right? So you get you, you agree to give that seller first month and sec and a security deposit. Now, when you're staying on a sandwich lease, you want some equity. So if the house is worth a hundred thousand, you want to at least be in that eighty. Yeah, Mister Seller, we're gonna get you cashed out, but it's gonna take about a year or two. So when you do your lease agreement with the seller, you want to get as long as possible, really. But we typically get about two to three years. So you will put that property on the contract, right? Now you are looking for somebody who want to occupy that home on the lease purchase. You only have to give the seller, remember the payments are 600, so we only have to give the seller 1,200 bucks. Now on a lease purchase, when you're marketing the properties for lease purchase, guys, I advise you do not take no less than 5% down. No less than 5% down. If you do, you <laughs> You gonna go to the school of hard knocks. So the more money, the, the more money a person put down on the property, the more they feel invested into the home. And so the tenants we get in the property, guys, they're going in in the house with a homeowner mindset versus a rental mindset. So, hey, this is gonna be my house one day. I'm gonna take care of it. And we we barely, rarely get properties back in bad shape. So you will put that person in. Just say you got down five thousand, right? got $5,000 down, you gave the, give the homeowner 1200 and now you're gonna manage that property for two years, try to get them cashed out. Hopefully you got a good credit repair company, so you can try to get them um, cashed out soon. If you need one, I got one that's pretty good. Just DM me or message me on one of the um, social media avenues. Got a really good lady, she takes off bankruptcies, foreclosures, mm -hmm. everything, she's the truth. So anyway, back to the money. Okay. So you put the person in there on a the lease purchase and you help them get their credit, you know, straight now where they can qualify. And once they get qualified, remember you have it on the contract with the seller for 80. So now you get that back in plus whatever has been paid down in the two years. So you'll walk away with 20 some thousand within about a year or two, just depending on how long you put the person in on the lease purchase. But remember, you can't, if you got only a year with your seller, you can't put a buyer in for two years. So, Make sure you don't mess that up. All right. Sounds good. Okay, so once again, I think that was all of the questions. Um, I think some people had questions about trust. I see like a whole back and forth about trust. Any final words on putting property in a trust or why we do that? And just a disclaimer, guys, I know y'all see y'all going in in these comments. <laughs> a lot of people are in different states, so y'all know what I'm going to say. Say it with me. Consult your attorney in your state. They'll be getting Instagram advice and Zoom advice or right. saying we said, <laughs> definitely don't say Deanna said, okay? So what y'all need to do is, um, you know, find an attorney at your RIA, at your meetup groups, find out who is the attorney that people are going to in your area. Um, so we're just answering stuff generally. We're just talking as a community. So. Um, and everybody, I see opinions in the comments, which is cool, but just find out for yourself the best way for you to protect your assets and your properties. But um, Mr. Transaction Engineer, would you like to leave us with some final thoughts on trust and then we'll be able to wrap up? Yes, I see. Roy. Yes, Roy, we got a um, mentoring program. Like I said, go to MrTransactionEngineer.com. We got students all over the country. So let's get to the trust. Guys, land trust. Now, 
they may not work in your state. They I'm in Georgia, and we're doing them in North Carolina also. So check with check with an attorney, guys. What works in Georgia may not work in your state. That's why you need to check all of that stuff. If you want to deal with pre foreclosures, check the pre foreclosure laws right. in your state. Every state is different. So mm -hmm. back to the land trust, guys. Here in Georgia and where we're buying properties, we put a property in a land trust. There's only two simple documents you need to get started, which is the warranty deed, the trustee, and the declaration of trust. You got a land trust. You just record that new title into a land trust. So for example, the, if the house is 123 Main Street, you have your house in 123 Main Street, residential trust, comma, mark, Jones as trustee. Now they're just the trustee of the property. They don't own the property. The owner is the beneficiary. That beneficiary goes in the declaration of trust. That's the true owner. You do not record the declaration of trust. You only record the warranty deed to trustee. That's it. And we got those documents on our on on our uh, website for like 150 or something. Your land mm -hmm. trust guys. Oh, one more thing, Deanna. Guys, sure. put your house in the land trust. My cousin, perfect. He bought this property out in Swanee, Georgia, guys. Man, mm. it, it hurts me to think about it. But he mm. got it for 300000 when the market crashed. He bought perfect. Now the house is worth one fifty. One of his businesses, he got sued for 150000 Now that $150,000 lien is on his house. He can't refinance and pull out that money, man. Mm -hmm. He pulling out that 150 and investing mm -hmm. into his other companies, but he blew it. He didn't know about the trust. No. So you got to protect yourself, protect your assets, guys. You're working yeah. too hard, man, to let somebody just put a lien on your house. You could right. be in an accident, somebody sue you for 20,000. If your, your property is in your name, that 20,000 is going to go against your house. HOA is going to go against your house, all this stuff. Now, HOA, you can't get around that. They're going to put a lien on that. But anybody else on the outside looking in, they look you up, they'll see you don't own any properties in your name. And that's mm -hmm. how it should be. That's how the rich protect their assets. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I mean, you brought the heat. <laughs> Did he bring the heat, y'all? Let me see in the comments. Let me make sure y'all still with us. Um, okay, well, thank you so much, Mr. Transaction Engineer. Uh-oh, I see a oh, oh yeah. Nice <laughs> all right so um everyone tell us how we follow you one more time um instagram facebook youtube can we get that information so instagram is mr underscore transaction underscore engineer youtube mr transaction engineer facebook the same mr transaction engineer and i'm on linkedin eddie raymond guys Guys, take action. Remember, life reward those who take action. Peace. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Okay. So let's see. Cool. All right. Y'all still with me? Was that good? <laughs> there y'all enjoying it? If you with me, say yeah. Well, let me see. Let me make sure I'm not just posting. Uh, yeah. If you if you got some good information, say cash. <laughs> I don't know if this is robots or what's going on. I want to know. Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh oh, well, maybe put my uh, Facebook DJ on. <laughs> I was really gonna come on here with like with some music, <laughs> but I'm a chill. <laughs> this is so fun are y'all having a good time just think about it there are so many people that do not know these strategies and you you know them okay oh y'all are funny i see money 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 i see turn up i see money bags <laughs> y'all gonna make me do this every week <laughs> not give it to me <laughs> okay first of all give it to me is a flipology joke shout out to flipology um and ramon Toops is our next speaker Ramon, are you there? So the next speaker, y'all, if you listen, listen, we're, we're just getting started. We have four more speakers left. So I'm going to give you two minutes to go get some water, get some coffee and come back to your seat. I hope that you have your notepad out. Let me see. Ramon, are you there? There you go. There I'm you here. Go. What's All up, right. Dion? 
we getting started. I told you go get your water. Now y'all late. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Deanna, how you doing? Hey, everybody. Hey, Ramon. <laughs> Uh-oh, they said Flipology Nation. Oh, it's really going to go crazy in the chat now. Look so, at that. So, you know, uh, I don't have my team and, and my iPad went out, so I'm on my cell phone, but we're going to make it happen. But we can see you. We can see you. We can see University of Wealth Building. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. Good. I'm about to give you the floor. I'm going to pop off. I'll be in the comments putting your information down for people to contact you. And your questions are in the Q&A box. I'm going to clear them out so you know the questions are directly for you. Okay? Okay. Got it. All right. Cool. Bye. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Listen, we have had uh, Deanna's done a wonderful job thus far, and the panelists before me are so amazing. So, again, I was taking notes. Uh, I'm glad I jumped on and you know blocked this out for the next couple hours. Uh, I wanted to jump on and talk to you guys about the power of leverage, uh, borrowing money, and I know people are afraid of uh, people opening it up. Uh, credit lines and, and loans right now but now is the time while we're sitting in the house you can be applying for different things and I just want to tell y'all a couple of ways that we have used and our clients are using um, other people's funding to um, buy properties so you know some of the areas and let me start this way subject to wholesaling pretty houses wholesaling I know Tim and Will are on here are going to be on here um, are amazing some amazing ways when we get into what we foresee as a market change, you need some money. Uh, you need money. I heard uh, Mr. Transaction Engineer say we need money for marketing. Um, we need money for our system. We need money for mentors. You need money. So I want to talk about where we get money from, why it's important for you to make sure your credit is up to par so that you can borrow money. So number one, uh, again, taking action is something big. I'm glad that um, Eddie, uh, ended his call, his, his training with taking action. It was a true blessing for him to be on here. Uh, but I want you guys to know if you got a, you know, if you got some money and you don't have enough to do a deal um, one way, and I don't know if anybody's going to talk about being, you know, joint venturing, partnering with other folks, but I want everybody to make sure our credit is up to par. And I'll tell you why. The power of leverage when we're talking about doing deals even if it's subject to, you got to get some money from somewhere. You got to be able to pay those notes. You got to be able to do some things. So right now, I'm advising people to go ahead. You know, um, we have some relationship with some business credit cards. We have relationships with term funding. We have some relationship with hard money lenders. We have some relationship with, you know, just all types of funding. And it's wide open right now. It's still wide open. Uh, I just talked with someone from the bank, and they said that they're still going to be lending. So while it's open, let's get access to all the cash we can get access to, right? So one thing that I'm going to tell you to do, and, I, and I'm going to say this, um, when we start talking about cash flow properties, just to piggyback off what both panelists said before, all three panelists said before me, we need some money, y'all. We need money. And uh, I know a lot of us are afraid right now because we are not financially prepared, and that's most of us. But to get some money, most of the time you have to borrow the money. Um, we can show you guys how to go get some business funding. Uh, and I, I think Dana is probably on here. I'm not sure if Dana's on here, Deanna. But um, we have a business partner uh, between Dana, um, Christian, and Will Roundtree, uh, and some other stuff with Liberty Avenue Capital. And, and I'm going to talk about this and show you guys just how this works that can get you some funding. Uh, one, business credit cards, they are out there. They are. Uh, available to those that have the credit scores and profiles that will um, that we can get you some business credit funding now when you borrow this money you it doesn't go on your personal credit but your personal credit is very important to the amount you get the uh, your profile is important that's something that's a whole nother topic I know but just imagine this and I'm gonna break it down a little bit let's say we can go find a subject to um, as the guy before me was talking about, and we needed eight grand, right? Mo a lot of people don't have eight grand just laying around that they're willing to put out because you may need to clean it up a little bit if you're not going to be wholesaling it, right? Uh, Quentin Brown, we'll, we'll jump into that. So no particular ones. Uh, 
Quinn, I don't personally manage that side of it. I refer that out because that's not my expertise, but I know the person that I'm going to refer you to is great at it. So um, if you can hit us up uh, and, and later on, I'll give that name, her name again or uh, his name again. Okay. Um, but you need eight grand and you need another three or four grand to carry it for a couple of months while you're waiting on that pretty house tenant or while you're waiting on it to sell. Well, you want to comfortably be able to go to closing. Right. So that, you know, you got a great deal. You're not like at the edge. What if somebody doesn't close it? What if that in buyer or in, you know, person doesn't buy it? If you have your own money, you're in control of your destiny. You're, you, you have more control than you would any other way. Right. So if we get you some of this money. You got to know how to leverage it. So if it's taking a subject to deal and you can, let's say we get you 30 grand. Right. And yes, you got to pay the payments on it. And, and we take out a year's worth of payment. So we got, let's call it 25 grand. Now you got 25 grand to work with. And if you're doing the subject twos the way the guys before us taught, us, taught you how to do it, you will get your money back and have that credit card paid back down or at least have the liquid asset, have the liquidity in your account within a six month period. Um, somebody asked a question, Deanna. Deanna, if somebody asked a question, repost it for me because I am on this um, cell phone. Uh, hopefully you guys got that. So that's that's just one way that we're using leverage. We're leveraging our business funding or business credit cards or term funding to partner with other types of funding, right? Same thing. If I'm going to give you a region, Cleveland, Ohio is a place that's on fire, right? We got some great partners up in Cleveland. They have duplexes on sale right, right now. And so you're not able to take these subject to maybe we can be creative and get some folks to own the finance. But what if we what if we're not able to, right? If we're not able to get the owner to own a finance, we need our own money. But the return can be amazing, right? When I say the return can be amazing, if we're in something for sixty five thousand for a duplex, and this is typical of um Milwaukee and Cleveland. Um and we're using somebody else's money. I got 65,000 on credit cards or term funding. The return is all the way crazy, y'all. It's all the way crazy. So I don't want us to get locked in on, we have to, have to. Um, how can I say this? Um, not use our own money, but when we can borrow somebody else's money to go buy a property, to lease out or to flip, then for me, that's one of the best ways to leverage and get like a, a, a unmeasurable ROI. Uh, and that's just, that's just some of it. Deanna, my phone was going in and out. Can you guys still hear me? I hope so. Um, okay, thank you, Deanna. So again, if, if you guys hear what I'm saying about leveraging, and I'm saying that's only one of the ways, even if you're partnering with somebody, if you're able to go out there and find good deals and you're taking money to where you have borrowed money for down payments or borrowed money to partner, then you're off on the right track, right? You're on the right track. So it's not just about being so creative. The creativity part is getting the funding. And to get the funding, guys, I want us to make sure we're all, right now we can be working on our credit, sending out letters. If our credit is not up to par, if you you know your profile is not right because you could have a great um diana says she would never use her own credit diana has bought 15 properties now i was on credit y'all but she has used the, i mean she's used her credit but it's been business credit which was you know she learned how to build it based on her personal credit um so I'm going to say something i just lost track just then but yeah so if, if we are understanding how to go out and get other funding we need to be, make it, make sure we're get, going to get that funding so that we can go out and buy properties, whether it be, um, you know, smaller duplexes, whether it be commercial properties, whether it be subject twos. I believe we all need to be also focused on making sure our credit is right, making sure we're getting all the cash we can get right now. Because here's the thing, if you don't have the cash, that would be the most frustrating part of not being able to take advantage of a recession or a poor market. And I want, I want everybody to, to be in position to, right now we still got some time, I think, but I want all of us to be in position. And you can, you can, what is it, the 21st, March 21st, 2020? You know, I, I believe we're gonna recover a little bit this year, but inevitably it's coming. And when it comes from personal experience, y'all, I um, was not able to take advantage of it in 2009 because we were in, we were inside of the crash. We were inside of the recession as opposed to gathering and all, saving all the cash, having all the access to cash. And even when you get those cards, go ahead and liquidate them. 
That way, if they cut the card off, you already got the cash. We'll deal with the credit stuff later. All right. Um, anybody have any questions so far? I see something. A young college student trying to start credit hit by student. So somebody asked me about a young college student starting with no credit or credit hit by student loan. So I guess one of my uh, questions would be: If you're in college, your credit shouldn't be taking a hit from um, student loans already. If, and, and that's again, that's not my expertise, but they should. I thought that student loan would wait until you're done with college. So don't quote me on that one. Um, but what I'll say is, if not, there's some folks that are on here. There's some folks that are out there that can help you get that in place. And then I believe I just saw something with federal student loans. They're, they're stopping them or delaying them for a couple of um, months. But if you're in college right now, you, your credit should not be taking a hit from student loans. I'm about 90% sure that's how that works. Another question, hold on a second. Okay, so are you? Um, does anybody else have any questions before I just talk about one other way we can do some deals? Okay, so um, I want you guys to keep continue in your mind. I know you know we we hear about no money down, no credit, but I know that when we when you're out here competing in the market, there's only a few ways that you get to do it. And I know Tim and Will are two of the best wholesalers in the world, so they're going to talk about wholesaling. So I won't touch wholesaling. Um, so is that roll price? So both, um, so gap funding, I won't call it gap funding cause gap funding. I know a lot of people say gap funding, but gap funding is more so bridge money. I'm talking about money that we can have out for whether it be business credit or term funding where we have time to repay it, where we can get it all, all the funding. If we get approved for a term loan where we got the funds in our account, or if we get a business credit card, or a business line of credit where we we actually have control of the funds, where it's not somewhere and we, you know, they gotta prove it. That's that's the funding that I'm talking about now. Did that help, Ro? Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson said, "What about private money lending?" Um, right now, uh, that's a whole nother way, Mr. Wilson. And thank you for bringing that up. You know, if you're able to go out and learn how to raise capital properly, uh, there are some folks that are losing a ton of money in their 401k right now that can roll it over to an IRA or folks with cash just sitting and they don't mind being that lender because the property is secure. You just got to know how to do that. You got to know how to pitch that. You got to know how to make sure that's secured. Uh, but you can also, you know, raise it in small amounts. You know, if you have the experience, um, people will trust in you. You can show them what you've been doing. If you don't have the experience, partner up. You got some great people on this. Uh, you know, I've heard uh, Justin and um, Jacquez, I think I'm saying it right, Jacquez talk about, um, you know, giving them a call. They got some, ama some amazing training. Um, I know that Will and Tim partner with everybody uh, on training. We do also, we have training programs. We partner, we uh, teach other folks on, you know, the different ways to make sure we're successful in this business. Um, Eddie also just talked about partnering. So, you know, it depends on where you are. I always say reach out and you can start with Deanna. Deanna is the connection between all of us. So if you need something, I'm sure she can. She got fun. Okay, uh, Jay, I'll jump into that in just a second. Um, but Deanna is the connection. If you need something, if you reach out to Deanna, she's gonna make sure you get it. She is our glue. Uh, she keeps all of us together. So, um, I always say reach out to her if you're not able to reach us. I'm Ramon Tooks on all social media. It's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty easy to find me. Um, somebody just asked about gap funding. Um, here, I hear people say gap funding just like I hear people say private money lending. And so let me, let me, I guess, hopefully I can explain the way I look at it. So gap funding is funding that just holds you over for a short term. I'm not talking about gap funding right now. Um, unless it's longer term, you know, and I don't want anything that's six months, anything that's short term, because that's going to be too much pressure on most of us to get done with the project or to repay it. So when I'm talking about, when so most people are saying gap funding, I do believe they're talking about like term funding, where you can get the money to fill in, you know, whether it be use it as a down payment or fund the entire project. We do have access to that. Um, um, I think, who was that that just posted that? Can you repost your name again? I'm sorry, so I can talk directly to you as well. 
But when you have access to that funding, um, you're able to use it for down payments. You're able to use it for operating costs. You're able to use it for marketing costs, which you need money for. Um, it is very, very challenging. Okay, Jay, thank you, Jay. It is challenging when you're operating with um, the way the economy is probably going, you know, eventually the recessions or whatever it's going to be. Uh, it, it will be a challenge because wholesaling will become a little bit more of a challenge unless you're working with somebody that's really, really good. And I, and I know, again, Tim and Will are on here and they will, you know, get more into wholesaling with you guys. Any other questions? Oh, the difference between private money and hard money. Um, and I'll say this. I've been around 24 years. Most people, when they start talking about, hey, I'm a private money lender, they're really not. Uh, and I don't mean to offend anybody. They're really a hard money lender. And and the difference is private money means I'm getting it directly from the individual. Um, and, my, this, and this is the Ramon Tuck's opinion. So, uh, and hard money means they are brokering it or it's, it's more institutional money. There, there lies a huge difference in that. Uh, private money, I'm raising it from the individual myself. I'm going to Deanna. Deanna, I need a loan. That's private money, even if the rates are a little bit higher. It's between C and I. Um, we start talking about hard money lenders uh, that are calling themselves private money lenders right now. It just seems, it, it, it takes the stigmatism off of it, but it's still the same thing. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so again, um, Deanna, I want to open it up for questions in about three or four minutes, but I want I want everybody to, in their mind, get prepared to put up some cash, have access to some cash, because if you go into a great market, what I call a great market, which is really a bad economy, you if you don't have the access to the capital, you're going to be very frustrated. It's still available right now, but if you don't go ahead and access it now, we don't know when it's going to be cut off. When, if you go ahead and get your business credit card funding and you get all of that cash in your account, you can move deals around. We can take you to places. I know Nick, I just saw Nick come in. Beyond is in Cleveland. We can take you to some places and get some really, really great return. And I want you guys, you know, Deanna, I'm going to get some homework. Um, imagine this. You take a business credit card and some term funding and you pool it together. Um, and we go out and find you a triplex. Let's call it a triplex. So I just got a, access to a triplex. Uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, for about 40 grand. It needs about 30 in work, right? That's getting $1,800 in return. So if I borrow 70, 70 grand from those two type, or even if I got it from my, my business credit card, right? 70 grand, and I had to pay back, let's call it 15%. But I was getting $1,800 a month. What kind of return on investment is that? I want somebody to tell me, where are my CPAs, economists, right? Keep in mind, it's not any of my money. So what kind of return is that? And I want you guys to practice that because when we are using other folks' money and you're using it properly, you will come out on top. You will be okay, all right? So my my kind of thoughts, Deanna, before I take questions is, you know, if you're not ready to get that business funding, let us help you get a, let us get you a consult with one of the guys or young ladies that's doing the business funding so that, oh, oh Diana, yeah, it's more than 100%, Diana. <laughs> uh, let us, get you in touch with those folks so that you can get access to capital. If you already have capital, uh, we can help you get access to more. If you need to help, if you need to build your credit, let's talk about that because it is, it is important. Um, and I know a lot of us talk about it, but long-term to be able to get through these, through these different shifts, um, you know, your credit is important. All right. Your personal credit and your personal profile is important. All right. Any questions? Okay, Deanna, do you have any questions for me? Did I stay on time, Deanna? Yeah, you did. You did. You're very punctual. Let's see. What questions do you guys have? Um, I have, what I did was um, questions that were asked earlier because some people have like multiple questions. I just took note. Um, so okay. let's get into finding your first deal. What advice can you give people who want to find their first deal? So, you know, Deanna, it's always, a, it, it depends question right mm -hmm. um, because it depends on where you are see most folks need to get assistance on where they are some kind of assessment right 
um, we do them, you know, we do a one-on-one -on -one consult. But the reason why I say it depends because if you, let's say you don't have any money, right? And you got bad credit and you need to start working as a wholesaler. I'm gonna say that, right? Going out, mm -hmm. finding deals, driving for dollars, partnering up with somebody, whether it be anybody on this call or somebody that's local in your city that you feel, you know, will show you how to do this business. Go out and find what they're looking for and get a fee for it. And then start to build up capital so that you can move into the other arenas, whether it be buy and hold, whether it be subject to, whether it be fix and flip, you mm -hmm. know. So that's kind of what I would say if you're starting. If you have access to capital, you need to understand what you kind of, what's your risk, uh, how risk averse are you? Because fixing and flipping mm -hmm. can be tough, especially right, right. now. Just, I mean, they just stopped uh, inspections and permits last week. So, mm -hmm. you know, would you be ready for that? You know, I cried all day last week, but mm -hmm. we'll get through it. Mm -hmm. you know, right. buying, and hold, buying and holding for me, I think is the safest mm -hmm. um, way to invest, uh, right. you know, because doesn't matter what the and I just heard one of them say it's about the cash flow but if the market goes down that tenant stays in there you're still getting your cash flow so again it depends on you know where you find your first deal first of all you need to know where you are financially and mentally like when I say mentally are you prepared to you know do a fix and flip are you prepared to file eviction on tenants if you want to buy or should you be wholesaling should you be partnering so it depends but, mm -hmm. but you know, that, that you need to know where you are to start. Okay. So now, um, let's see, what other questions we got? Um, well, I think we should reiterate how to get into, oh, you know what? We didn't touch on working. What, what are your comments about like partnering with people and working with people? Because literally yesterday when I was going live talking about this, someone was like, well, how do I do deals virtually? You know, I know you were talking about Cleveland and people get kind of stuck, right? Or some people want to do some deals here in Georgia and they're like, I don't, I, I live in Cleveland, but I want to invest here in Georgia. So can you reiterate how to like partner with you partner with whatever and then i'm putting your um your information in the chat as well so okay. can you touch on that so, so what i would say is it's really all about the systems and the people that's running the system so you know i i tell people even if you something happens in a deal if you have the right system in place you'll get through it um when you start talking about you know working in different cities virtually especially if you're fixing and flipping, you got to make sure you got the right person that's not going to give up. Because stuff happens, Deanna. So yeah. you got to make sure you reach out to a Deanna and say, hey, Deanna, who have you heard that I should partner with? And then interview your partner. Make them show you what they're doing now. You know, if yeah. somebody tells you, oh, I've never had a deal go bad, mm -hmm. I've never had, then I don't know. I mean, I want to meet them too. You're right. right. So don't, don't let it be too good to be true. And there may be somebody out there, Deanna, right? Mm -hmm. But don't let it be too good to be true. Find out what they're doing. Look at their resume. You know, see what kind of hardship they've hit, and then how did they get through it? You know, even right. on wholesale deals, we we run into roadblocks. You know, and so a lot of us, you know, if you're partnering and you count on that money, and the title issue pops up, or somebody's put a lien on it, or you know, you don't get one of the sellers to come to the table because it's a probate and a sibling that like the other sibling. You know, there's some things that you need to partner with those that are good. Uh, a great on so that you get through the deal. That, I mean, that would be my advice. Like, if you want to do something virtually, um, make sure you get the right partner. Okay. All right. So, partnerships are okay, y'all, right? Like they say, 50% is better than zero, 20, 30. 10, right. 5, whatever, yeah. partner with somebody trustworthy. And um, these are awesome people that are on here, y'all. I personally have learned real estate from the people that are on this live, on this webinar, okay? Um, let's see. Um, I think we've kind of answered a lot of stuff. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the University of Wealth Building um, and the resources under that? Yeah, so uh, the University of Wealth Building, I know somebody asked me, was it like a real, right? And I, I told them it's a, it's not like a real because what we have done is we've encompassed not only just real estate, mm -hmm. um, where we want you to build well, you know, financially, spiritually, mentally, uh, socially, and, you know, under the financially piece, real estate is there. But yeah. we also have other subjects that we've touched on. You know, monthly, um, we, we, we extended it this year, but monthly we have different topics, whether it be, you know, men's mental health is something big that we're focused on right now. 
guys, you know, if you're on here, we do a men's call every Sunday night, but that's something I want to make sure we're ready. Like, if we're not ready, we're not able to protect. I mean, we're still protectors and providers, y'all. And so no matter what society has said about where we should be, you know, we are protected. And we got to be ready for that mentally. So we, we go into that. We've had a women's health uh, presentation. I mean, we've had some, when I say unbelievable speakers and topics and trainings over at the University of Wealth Building, and as it grows, we will um, – Continue to bring you everything that we feel like, and if you guys request something, it's like a it's like a traditional university. You know, we have professors from all over the all over the country, all over the world that's speaking to us about making us better. Okay, all right. So morning, Wilson says Monday morning, men. men. Yeah. Okay, wait. So Monday morning, men. So it's not the Sunday night thing anymore. So it's the Sunday night call. So quickly, I, I know I got about two or three minutes, but Monday morning men, the reason why we named it Monday morning men is mm -hmm. because, you know, between Sunday night and Monday morning is the time that men are so stressed. Most people are. So the, the stress okay. kicks in, right? Yes. More men have heart attacks and commit suicide between that Sunday night, 10 p.m., Monday morning to 7 or 8, 8 o'clock a.m. And so mm -hmm. Monday morning men, I want to make sure we're prepared on Monday morning to go out and conquer the world. Uh, and we do the call on Sunday night so that we're not going to bed stressed. You know, we say a prayer. We ask everybody, are you okay? Like, because there's a lot of people and a lot of people don't understand how many people are walking around that's, you know, ready to jump off the bridge for real. And so we want to go to bed with some kind of feeling like, we're, hey, y'all, if y'all need us in the middle of the night, give us a call. And we want to wake up Monday morning fresh. And so that we are, again, doing what we're supposed to do. Yes, that's amazing. That's awesome. You know, and that's what I really appreciate about you, Ramon. You're always speaking life and abundance. Um, I Like literally every time you're teaching, I'm trying to tune in. So you guys make sure you go on his website. I'm going to paste it again. I got two quick things, Deanna. Um, yes. I know Mr. Wilson didn't say anything to you about that word you just used, but I'm going to take that dollar. And I Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Wilson, you know, he, he he I send my dollar. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to say this. I know I started off talking about leveraging our credit, uh, but I also want to make sure we're leveraging our resources and relationships. Uh, and that comes to, you know, when you start talking about partnerships, those are relationships. Uh, it's days when um, I want to give up or I'm just in a, you know, I've hit a roadblock. I can reach out to our relationship. I can reach out to, you know, I've had some days where I want to, you know, pull out the gun and go grab one of the contracts and put them in the, you know, and dig a hole for them. But when I reach out to Tim or Will, they, 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 they say, man, this, you know, it's not that bad. We can, we can pray about it. You know, there's some other things that we do. So make sure not only we're leveraging our credit to go get the capital, but we're leveraging it to protect ourselves and just to be, a, to be better investors and better people. <laughs> you're in trouble you say that eating me up in these comments hold on a minute now <laughs> I didn't do it Deanna <laughs> they said I gotta send you my dollar direct okay <laughs> well thank you so much you guys follow um, you, follow Ramon <laughs> follow Ramon on Instagram go to universityofwealthbuilding.com alright Ramon thank you so much thank, thank you, you Deanna thank you alright let's see so and woo! All right, how y'all feeling? How y'all doing out there? Y'all still with me? Say um, deal. Are you still with me? Say deal. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Y'all want me to put some music on? Will and Tim are next. <laughs> Every time I see "Give It to Me," I'm weak. Because if you were with us at Flipology, you know. Deal. Somebody said it in capital letters. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, we are jumping in here. We're almost at capacity. This is so fun. Like, what other way would you want to spend your Saturday? Okay, so in just a minute, um, we're going to be bringing on Will and Tim, who I know are gonna set it off up in here, okay? So um, make sure you follow these folks on Instagram. Uh, remember, if you want more uh, webinars and value like this, um, make sure you join the RIA, which is the South Atlanta Real Estate Investor Association, okay? Somebody said cold calling. You know they are gonna get into marketing. I know they can see the chat. 
<laughs> there's OT. Okay. All right, guys. So I'll be continuing to put their social media um, in the chat. I'm getting ready to bring them on. Let me give them video capability. We on time and everything. There goes Tim. Let's see. Let me, I might have to give Will. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Well, we on time. All right, guys, I present to you, these are my big brothers, for real. All right, like half of this panel. <laughs> All right, so they getting ready to come on. Let me unmute them. Will, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Him? I can right. hear you. Okay, perfect. All hey. right, y'all take it, take it over. Hey, Deanna, how you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. I'm so happy to have you guys on. All right, hey family, how you guys doing? Guys, we are so grateful and we are so thankful um, to be able to jump on this uh, webinar today. Um, you know, first off, I'd just like to thank God, um, you know, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Deanna for the host. Uh, we certainly appreciate you putting everything together. Um, you know, we are so grateful that, um, that you know, you, you, you thought enough to make this happen on Saturday and uh, to, to, to make this a reality. Um, and then, you know, we also would like to thank all of our other guests, uh, Pierre, Justin, um, phenomenal presentations. Um, Want to thank Mr. Transaction, Eddie, my brother, phenomenal uh, presentation. Uh, Ramon, Mayor, thank you so much. <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. And I uh, just want to thank you guys uh, for jumping on. Uh, we certainly appreciate this thing uh, today just to kind of give you guys a little bit of, um, of who we are. Uh, my name is Tim Hart Harvey. That's my partner over there, Will Galloway. And uh, we were blessed to start um, REI Wholesale as R Us back in 2015. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I actually got into this business in 2001. I was a restaurant manager and I uh, just wanted a different way to do business. I just wanted a different way uh, to actually live my life. I wanted my time back. I was working about 80 hours a week. And a friend of mine came to me and said, hey, let's do some real estate. I jumped in in 2001, uh, got, got hit in that crash in 2008. And uh, mistakenly, because I did not know the right people, um, I jumped out of the business and went back into corporate America because I just did not know what to do. Did not have a uh, network like this and um, got back into corporate America. Uh, found my way back into the business um, via, um, via short sales and um, you know, started doing short sales. And uh, even while I was on my job, I, you know, I, I started, you know, I started doing business and uh, eventually found my way into actually doing wholesaling um, through that time. And uh, since then, I um, was able, you know, I've done hundreds of wholesale deals um, over the years and uh, grateful for that time. And since then, I ran into a partner. My partner actually had a, um, and I'm just giving you guys an abbreviated version of this, um, but ran to my partner, um, Will, through a, um, through a bandit sign and uh, gave him a call. We ended up doing a deal together and uh, found that we were both like-minded uh, Christian individuals that did business and uh, did it at a high level. And uh, that's how we met, partner. Yeah, take yourself off mute. <laughs> there we go. There. Just take yourself off mute. I don't there know why go. I was having an issue and I use Zoom every week. I don't know why I was having an issue with that. Can I know. Right? Go ahead. Oh, well, first of all, man, I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, I thank my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, for allowing me this platform to be able to speak. Um, thank you, Deanna. This has been an awesome, awesome, awesome um, event so far. Uh, all the speakers have been amazing, um, from Ray to, uh, I think, Jacquez, Justin, and, of course, the mayor, uh, Ramon, our big brother. Um, been some great information so far. So, you know, Again, we're, we're appreciative for being here. Um, we already know why we're here today. Um, you know, we are um, in this situation with all this COVID-19 um, going on. Uh, so we really, you know, just to be honest with you, we're going to get straight to it. You know, we ain't going to sugarcoat it. You know how we come. Um, me and Tim, we're going we're gonna to bring the heat. Um, like Ramon even kept mentioning earlier, um, what we specialize in, of course, is wholesaling. Um, we're just going to touch on wholesaling, and we're going to open it up for any questions. Um, you know, I think um, for right now, I think that 
the creative financing that was spoken earlier, I think those are also um, great, great, great options. I definitely believe they are great options. Me and Tim also are exercising those options as well, where um, a lot of sellers right now um, don't want to continue with their mortgage and subject tools are awesome, awesome um, alternatives. But um, we, we specialize in wholesaling, you know, um, the reason why we feel like wholesaling is so important right now is because, you know, because of the limited investment that you can actually get into the business with, you know, and right now um, with, the, with the market is going the way it is, we all need to be very, very cautious of our finances right now and the, cap, the, the capital that we do have. So we have to be a little bit more strategic with our marketing. Um, I think, you know, Deanna touched earlier about marketing. Um, marketing right now, we, we have to um, be smart with it. You know, we have to understand that um, there is going to be a chance where we have to get back into our businesses. I know a lot of people talk about, me and Tim was talking about this yesterday, a lot of people talk about automation this, automation that, and all of that is fine. But there's going to be a time now where the business owners now are going to have to get back into their businesses and they're going to have to start taking things more seriously. Um, you know, me and Tim are starting back making calls, you know, even though we have people making calls for us. But now we're making calls. We're getting back into our business. We're watching over the marketing dollars. We're watching over all the automation stuff that's going on, um, you know, watching over what our um, employees are doing and stuff like that. So um, we're having to make changes. You know, we're having to change the way we do business and be a little bit more smarter about the way we're doing business. Um, from a marketing um, standpoint, uh, everybody knows that one of the main marketing um, things right now, um, from a low cost perspective, um, of course, cold calling. You know, I feel that cold calling uh, is one of the one of the one of the best things that you can do right now uh, because a lot of people are at home right now. A lot of people are you know um, quarantining right now, so this will be the perfect time to you know pick up a phone and call you know this is the perfect time to get a list from diana get a list and um make those calls um make those offers you know i think that um what we have to realize is that we are now shifting to a uh, buyer's market you know right now at first it was a seller's market where you know the sellers were kind of dictating everything um but i think in a minute it's going to kind of shift to a buyer's market where the buyers are actually going to dictate what's going to happen next right. we all know um that the I buyers are pulling out right now. So with the I buyers are pulling out and a lot of the hedge funds are pulling out right now, the buyer pool is is shrinking. And I don't I don't think I don't think it's to the point where buyers are not buying. I think buyers are just being cautious of where is the market gonna go in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months. Because what they don't wanna do is they don't wanna buy at a premium when it within a couple of weeks or a couple of months, things that the prices are gonna drop. Sellers are gonna have to start taking less. So with that, so for, from us as wholesalers, we have to be smart with our offers. We got to offer like 60% or less, you know, on, on properties. All of these off, all of these properties that have been on the market lately that a lot of wholesalers have been posting on Facebook and emailing out on the email list. Guess what? You guys are going to have to get these prices down because these prices are not going to fly. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be smarter with our offers. We got to be smarter with our negotiating with sellers. And we have to educate sellers on what our market is going to be because they have to understand and, and, and equip their mind to think like, hey, that retail price you're trying to get, there's a possibility you're not going to get nowhere near that. Now we have to bring them back down to reality. And yes, yeah, sellers are going to take a hit. But this is the perfect time for us wholesalers, especially now that the eye buyers are bowing out. Hey, they're going to need another alternative to sell their house. So that's when we have to come in. We have to be that first point of contact. And um, we have to be that person that's actually going to be able to get them an offer. And, and the reason why I say offer at the right price, just because sellers are desperate, they're still going to go. They're still going to want their price. But you have to educate them on why that price is not realistic right now. Because what you don't want to do is flood the market with all these overpriced properties out here, and then you're still in the same place where you can't move them because buyers are not buying at premiums right now. Buyers want a discount, and they're probably not even going to really realistically start really buying buying until the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months because they want to see where the market is going to go right now so you can jump in tim i know i said a lot yeah, but, um, i mean i mean i mean the thing is you know the main thing is you know to requalify you know like a lot of these deals that you see out there you need to requalify your sellers um you know you know just just go back to them because everybody knows what's going on and also requalify your buyers now's the time to requalify your buyers and requalify your sellers so you know what 
we're doing you know, we're doing in our businesses like like Will said we're jumping into our business now and uh, and we we we're requalifying everything about our business right now. So what we're doing is we we you know we, we're taking our buyers list. We're requalifying requalifying our buyers. Like hey, are you still buying? Are you still in this market? Are you still doing this? Are you still cash? Blah blah blah. You know, the other thing that we're doing is we're requalifying the sellers. So every list that we have, there's no such thing as a bad list right now. There's no such thing as a bad, bad list right now unless they've already sold the property. So get get back to your list. Um, I know Deanna has great lists, you know, some lists that we feel like are some of the best lists right now, these landlord lists right now, because a lot of landlords do not know what to do. You know, a lot of landlords feel like they are stuck. So I would take one of Deanna's landlord lists and call those lists, the probate list. Call those probates because people are seeing the news and people are saying, hey, you know, it's a bad time. It's actually a good time for us. This is the time where we are going to make as much money as, I mean, as, 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 as get out um, if we stay in there. So, so now is the time to get back in your business, you know, and, and those of you that are just getting started, you know, this is the perfect time to get started because you're starting fresh. So take one of those lists, call people, be like, hey, we understand what's going on. We need for you to, you know, if, um, you know, if you're looking to possibly sell your property right now, go ahead and sell it before prices drop even more. And that that is a realistic thing to say to sellers right now because sellers are understanding. The other thing is that sellers are at home, um, you know, and, and listen, they're waiting for your call. There are people that want cash. They're trying to find solutions um, to doing this business. So, so guys, like Deanna said, yes, her, her season lists are for sale now. Now, so, so I mean, definitely get with the season list as well as the new list and, uh, and, and, and let's go at it. Um, if you are, um, if, and, 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 I, and I know, you know, we're talking about the virus, you can still do driving for dollars, okay? Get in your car. You don't have to get out. <laughs> you get in your car and, uh, and, and, and still, you know, look for those deals. Look for those, look at those properties out there. There are people still out there on the hunt right now. Um, we're speaking to our investors. A lot of our private investors are still investing. They're still, you know, they, 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 you know, people, you know, I got calls today, people still out there looking for properties to buy and um, they do have the funding. So, so definitely get out there. Um, this is a good time. This is a good time for the return of the mom and pop investor. OK, because, you know, the I buyers, you know, like you said, you know, a couple of them pulled out yesterday, uh, day before. So prices are going to get back to normal and it's going to be time to uh, for, for us all to uh, all to shine and make money. And um, and, you know, just, you know, listen, if you listen to what the media says and you listen to what the news says, you are going to lose. OK, I'm not saying don't be cautious. But if you listen to what they say about stopping things and stopping business, then you are going to lose. This is the time where we make our money. This is the time where we go in and go all out. So this is what we this is what you guys should be doing. So if Deanna has a new list available, let's go and let's make money with it, you guys. Partner. Gotta get you off uh, mute. You still on mute? Right, cool. I, was, I was muted. Okay. So another thing I wanted to point out was, um, yeah, go for it. What yeah, you I, I, I forgot. I forgot to say this. The cre okay. okay. The, the, this is the this is the other thing. Okay. The creative real estate strategies that our partners have been talking about. I mean, listen, you've got to add this stuff to your toolbox now. Um, also, you know, add these things to your toolbox because you know these are going to be the solutions. You know that you know, solutions that people need. So for instance, you know, if, if you do, you know, if, if, if you do one of the, um, one of the solutions that Eddie, um, 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 Justin and Pierre are talking about, if, if, if you're doing that, then you actually are getting access to properties. You're getting access to these properties. And then when things slow, when things change again, then you guess what? You're the person in control of these properties. And that's the other thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I just want to talk briefly on, um, I think Ramon kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, I don't think he went in depth about it. Um, we really, really, to be honest with you, I think the rest of this 2020 year, we need to really, really, the reason why, and this is the reason why wholesaling is so good. This is the reason why wholesaling is so good. Yeah. We really, really need to focus on, on building a pipeline of cash right now. Oh, because yeah. one thing I did 
you know, a couple of years ago when the market was still getting better, as I was wholesaling, um, I wasn't going out, you know, spending money on unnecessary things. I was investing my money in the properties when they were still 10, 20, $30,000. And I was able to accumulate a whole lot of them. So you want to build up cash and it's cool to leverage, you know, and I know y'all teach, you know, leveraging um, lenders money and stuff like that. But what happens when the lenders shut down? Because we don't know, a lot of them are nervous right now. You know, we don't know how long that wave is going to last. So one thing I can say is if you, got your, if, you are, if you are cash heavy, then you can control your own destiny. You know, so you want to make sure that you put yourself in a position where you're building up capital, building up capital. So when properties do start getting cheap, you want to be able to swoop it in, you know, because you do want, you know, that cash flow. Another yeah. thing about the cash flow thing is, you know, yeah, you know, I, I definitely, you know, speak cash flow as well. And I, you know, of course, got um, plenty of rental, prop rental properties, but we also have to understand with that, we don't even know where that is headed to because, you know, even the mayor has put out a post that, you know, um, tenants don't have to pay, um, they don't have to be evicted within 60 days, you know, because there's going to be tenants that's going to feel like, hey, you know, I don't have to pay. And then I, I, but I understand that the banks are, you know, um, being, you know, they're not foreclosing and stuff, which is a good thing. So it kind of offset that issue right there. But we also have to understand that we can't solely just depend on cash flow. And that's one of the reasons why even with that, that instance, I think now we need to kind of start thinking about if you do have cash flow properties, try to get them section eight, because with section eight, I think that the government is going to make it to where you still get your money. You know what I'm saying? I can't guarantee that. But I would rather play in that direction than to be dependent on an individual to give me my money right now because individuals right now are in panic mode. People right now are thinking about sales. They're not thinking about paying no mortgage or paying no landlord or nothing like that. So a lot of us are going to, you know what I'm saying, who are landlords, like myself, a lot of us are going to see maybe, you know, you may not be able to get your rent for a couple of months. And guess what? You can't file eviction on them. So I would say if you are building – um. If you are um, building a portfolio of rentals, move toward Section 8. You know, move toward, that's just my opinion, move toward a government assistant where you know that that money is going to get there and you're not going to be dependent upon an individual paying you because good luck with that, you know. And I'm not saying all tenants are like that, but I will say, I guarantee you 40 to 50 probably percent of those tenants, if somebody's been laid off, and it's not that they're purposely wanting to do that. It's that they're forced. Like if they just got laid off, or they don't, you know, have um, means of making money and their priority is their family and, and, and bringing in food and shelter and stuff like that, then mortgages and, 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 and landlord rents and stuff is the last thing on their mind, especially if they know that, you know, they're not going to get penalized for it for the next 60 days because you got to think it's going to take more than 60 days because guess what? If the mayor is giving them 60 days to not have to pay their rent and then they got, by the time they do open up to where you can't file an eviction, that line is going to be so long. So you got another waiting on the courthouse to give you a hearing, that's going to be another um, 30 to 60 days. So you got four to five months before you're probably even going to be able to file an eviction. So that cash flow, that I mean, the, um, the cash flow option, of course, is great, but it boils back back down to getting that instant flow cash flow, which is wholesaling. You know what I'm saying? That's the instant cash flow. So that's why I'm not pushing people away from, from, from renting. No, I'm not doing that because I have rental properties too. I'm just saying I would... I would um, focus on maybe going towards Section 8 because the government is going to make sure, of course, you get your money. Just, I mean, God given that they don't, God willing that they don't shut their um, their um, um, situation down. But I just wanted to touch on that. But the next thing I want to touch on, and me and Tim Buff are going to touch on this, I think right now, guys, community, 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 yep. community is so important right now. I think yep. that all of, it's a lot of high level investors on here today. Mm -hmm. I think that we all, and I know Ramon is really good at this, but we all need to come together right now. And we really, really need to work together right now. This is, I know we've been talking about partnering a lot lately and that's JV and all this, but this is, the, this is the time now where we really, really got to come together because there's going to be times where there's going to be a lot of deals that a lot of us can't move because maybe our buyers are not interested in those deals, but maybe, you know, one of y'all buyers might be interested in it. And this is going to be the time where we have to come together and we got to make money together. And that's why I love our community, Wholesalers of Us, because all we talk about is community. You yeah. know, we have a Monday call that we do at 8 o'clock every Monday. We've been doing it for two years now. We've had Wholesalers of Us um, meet up um, since um, 
2015. So everybody knows, you know, when it comes to Tim and Will, all we talk about is community. All we talk about is giving back. All we talk about is mindset because mind, the mind right now is going to be the most, I mean, if we don't have to be strong right now, this is, this is the time we have to come together. That's why I love, you know, what Ramon did for the, month, uh, the Monday morning thing where he understands, like we understand, where our mind has to be equipped to be able to go through what we're going through. You know, so don't quit. Don't give up. Put God first. But community, community, community right now. Let's, and we need to, and, and, and me and Tim talked about it, we're working on, and we're going to, you know, bring Ramon in on this and a couple of our high-level investor friends. We need to put together um, some type of pool where we're, we're co communicating with our deals. We're constantly communicating with our deals, and we're making sure that we're moving these deals because it's going to be deals where we can't move that our community can move or our community got deals that we can move, you know. So this is the biggest time, and this is the best time right now where we need to have a community um, and come together on a weekly basis, um, if not every other day basis, and we're constantly talking about deals, similar to what Ramon do for deal makers. We need to do more of that. We need to build more communities like that. Um, I know he do that on Thursdays. We do our um, hopeful sales of us on Mondays at eight o'clock every Monday. But now is the time for community, 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 because we have to bring each other up. We have to build each other up. And one thing good about our community and and also deal makers community is we not only talk about deals, but we talk about the spirituality side because that to me, the mindset part is bigger than all of this real estate. Forget all this real estate stuff because if you're not built mentally, you're going to quit or you're going you're gonna to lose out and you're going to be another person that just give up on the business. You're going to try to go to whatever else next um, that you feel like you can make money from. But I feel that community is everything because there, where there's community, um, there's positivity, their spirituality, um, mindsets are going to be built because, again, this is what we need, guys. So, um, Tim, jump in. I know, you know, I get passionate when it comes to stuff like this. Oh. But I just want to make sure everybody leave um, this meetup, this meeting, which was a great meeting. Um, I want everybody to know that community is everything. Will and Tim is here for you. All the guys that have spoke, um, Ed, um, Pierre, Justin, Ramon, every, we're all here for you guys. And reach out to any of us. You know what I'm saying? We all, you know, um, looking for deals. We're still buying deals. I'm still buying. I'm still looking for deals right now. I still have, you know, buyers that are still looking. So reach out to us. You know, we're here. So yeah. um, probably need to open up for questions. I know we've been talking oh, a lot. So let's no, get some questions real quick. Oh, no, this is real. Um, if there are any questions, yeah, we definitely get to the questions. But, but this is definitely real. Um, you know, from a standpoint of community, you know, get with a community that you can trust. Um, I know Deanna has put everything together uh, for us. And um, now listen, guys, this is the time that you need to get with a community you can trust. Last time, um, when, when, when things happened back in 2008, I did not have a community I could trust. But now we have a community that we can all trust and we can all kind of work together and, um, and really, really do this thing. I want to say a couple of things real, real quick about um, about what you need to be doing now when you're looking at deals. Guys, the main thing is to look at actives. Look at actives. Now, you know, your comps, your comps now may be obsolete, but look at actives. When you're, when you're looking that stuff up on, on Redfin and places like that, look at the active comps. Um, pre-qualify your sellers, definitely pre-qualify your sellers now for the motivation, find out exactly where it is, find out where it hurts when, you get, when you're making those calls. Um, price ahead of the market. So when you're getting with these sellers, make sure that they understand and that you and that, and, and that you're educating your sellers on, on, on what's going on with the market, what specifically, why we need the price, we need to why we need the price for we need the price, and, and and just go for it. That way you're priced ahead of the market instead of putting something stale out there that um that that no one can buy. And we'll have a help we'll have a healthy market um, going out. Um, anybody have any questions? Uh, for I can't see the questions, but I know it's a lot of, um, Deanna, help us find the question that's related to us, because I, I, I can't, I see a lot of, um, I see a lot of, um, yeah, shout, out to, shout out to our um, favorite broker, Keto Johnson, he said, Deanna, this is awesome. Man, shout out Keto. to our favorite yeah. broker. That, 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 that's another, that's, that's another cog, um, yes. you know, important cog in this will uh, here in Atlanta, Keto Johnson, big ups. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm gonna help y'all with questions because I see them rolling in. Why they disappear? Okay, they disappeared. Okay, just kidding. Um, 
<laughs> All the questions disappeared. But listen, we were just talking about our brother Keto. Yes, Keto's in the um, comments. He's at Keto J Johnson. So follow him. Yes. Uh, we might have to do another panel because I see names popping up. So we're going to do this again. <laughs> I was like, this would have been eight hours y'all, if I got y'all. Everybody, we would have been here. Right. Uh, and that ain't fair. I think we all should look, Dion. I don't think that's fair. We should all have an hour piece. Because <laughs> I know those guys like, man, I got so much more to say with God. Leave. No. So is this is what we're gonna do. So, first of all, y'all, make sure you guys join their meetup. I've been putting it in the con in the comments. Wholesalers are us on meetup. Y'all correct me if I say it wrong. And then yeah. REI, REI, like real estate investment, REI. Um, wholesalers are us on Facebook, right? Because guys, they go live every Monday. I don't miss the lives. So I'm always on there because I always learn from them. Um, so you guys, we talked about what what do you say for people that are gonna listen to this webinar and then still not take action? Like what would you say right now? How do we get past that hump so next week we're not in the same spot? Let's start there. And I'm looking for questions for y'all. I think I think taking taking action comes from understanding, and um, and and if you don't understand, then I think you're around the right people to help you understand. You know, starting specifically with you, Diana. So so here's the thing: if 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 you're not taking action, the reason is is because you don't understand. We're telling you that this is the time right now to take mm -hmm. action. So if there's something that you don't understand about this. Then, uh, then definitely ask all the questions and then get started with your action. Now, I say this, I'll, 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 I'll requalify that. Um, don't, you don't have to know everything to take action, okay? I'm gonna requalify that. You don't have to know everything to take action. You really just have to know the first step because if you've got a, because if you've got a group of people that are here to help you, that are telling you, hey, this is what's right, then, um, then you just really just need to know the first step. Once you understand that first step, Go ahead and take the action is what is what they're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. I'm trying to um drop down in these comments. Um Okay, we got another marketing questions. And guys, these are the people to ask marketing questions. So let's talk about some other marketing channels. I know we talked about lists. Listen, I appreciate y'all. I don't want y'all to think we just talking about lists. There are other marketing channels. That's cool, right? So let's talk about some other marketing channels um, that folks can use. I know we talk about the shoestring budget. Maybe folks just don't have money yet for a list or something like that. What else can people do right now to find um, to find you? Drive for dollars. You can okay. still drive for dollars. Mm -hmm. um, get your mask on, you know, get out there and, uh, you know, get those addresses and do your skip tracing. You can still do skip tracing from the house, from the comfort of your home. Mm -hmm. So drive for dollars. Right. Um, I would say, um, yeah, drive for dollars. I would say, of course, cold calling. I would say texting uh, is real good. You know, uh, get a big list and send out some text messages. Uh, bandit signs, you know, I think bandit signs, you know, uh, <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe the code enforcement won't be pulling them up as much because it's not. A, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just guessing. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's not a lot of traffic out there. Um, yeah. you, you can get some signs. I mean, I just That's I had funny. just ordered some, and I got some. I got to pick up as well. So uh, I'm gonna have my guy put them out. Um, just that man, one. If you if you can't get no order, you know, me and Tim I always speak the free method. Go get some cardboard boxes and handwriting. You know, mm -hmm. home people still open, go get to some steaks. Put a family like, dollar, yeah. a dollar we gotta, Sometimes we got to get dirty, man. Go behind Family Dollar. They got a whole load full of cardboard boxes. Get yeah. you a black Sharpie. Mm -hmm. Right on there, we buy houses. And I will write on there, we're still buying houses. You know? <laughs> I love and, that. Home Depot steaks, the wooden steaks. And get out there and do what you got to do. You know, so I mean, it's... It's limited. It's ways that you can do it with limited marketing budget. I mean, we just named cold calling a list. Yeah. SMS text. Mm -hmm. um, signs. Did you did you want us to ask? Did you want us to answer driving for dollars, uh, Deanna? Um, the driving for dollars, the software. No, somebody was asking about driving for dollars. What is yeah. driving for dollars? Okay. Yeah, okay. sure. Go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dri driving for dollars um, basically is uh, you just going out. Um, you going into a neighborhood. I recommend the neighborhood that's close to you. Um, go to a neighborhood and just write down those addresses. Um, and then you come back and you do what's called skip tracing. Okay. 
Come back to the house. You do what's called skip tracing. Skip trace. There are many skip tracing of Skype, uh, sites out there. Skip trace to find the owner. Um, 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 skip. First, you go to the uh, to the uh, um, the um, the Fulton County website or the uh, or the county website to find the owner. Then you skip trace that owner's uh, name, telephone number, and uh, you get that telephone number. You call them um, or you send out a letter. So that's how you drive for dollars. That that that's in essence what driving for dollars is. And just ask they want to buy, they want to sell their house. You know, um, in in so many terms. So real quick, I know we got like uh, one minute left, so I just want to, I guess, tell how to get in touch with us real quick before we let the um, um Brandon on. Uh, you can follow me and Tim. Um, Tim Instagram. Who is at Tim? I mean, who is Tim Harvey? Uh, that's his Instagram. Your Facebook is what Tim Harvey? Yeah, Tim Harvey on Facebook. My Instagram is um, at Uncle Bill by Houses. That's at Uncle Bill by Houses on Instagram. My Facebook is um, William Galloway. If you want to send us some deals, we're looking for deals right now, um, everywhere right now. If you're looking, if you want to send us a deal, um, REI Wholesalers are us at gmail.com. That's REI Wholesalers. That's REI Wholesalers, R U S, that's R us at gmail.com. Um, we're, we want to partner with you. If you got a deal, you can't move, send it to us, let us analyze it. We'll be happy to help you. And, um, we meet also up, on meetup, meet like Deanna mentioned, we have meetup. Go ahead, bro. Meet up through Zoom. We meet up through Zoom next week, I think. Right. Yeah. And send us an email if you want to jump on our yeah. Monday call. It's every Monday at eight o'clock. If you want to be on the next one, if you've never been on it before, I know a lot of people that's on this call today, they be on our Monday calls faithfully every Monday at eight o'clock. We're on Facebook. And we're on Zoom, so send us an email and we'll send you the link. Thank you, Deanna. God yeah. bless you. Meet up, meet up through Zoom. Okay, meet up through Zoom, y'all. I put all the information down there. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Tim. Y'all make sure y'all follow them on everything. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes, and get your list. All right, cool. Let me see. I'm about to bring Brandon in. Hold on, y'all. I'm getting pretty good at this. Okay. All right, cool. Brandon, what's up? Mr. Wiggly. Brandon J. Wiggly is on, y'all. Okay, so just to recap, if y'all still with me, say yeah. You still with me, say yeah. Somebody said B. Wig is in the house. Okay. All right. Comments going crazy for Brandon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we are going to get into some Q&A now. Um, you guys asked us a ton of questions. I actually took note of all of your questions. Um, so we're going to make sure we answer them right now. Um, the next person that I'm bringing on is Brandon Wigley. He's got a ton of experience in real estate, sales, marketing, you name it. Um, so we are going to get into that stuff. So not only will we answer your questions in the Q&A box, um, we will um, also, you know, insert some gems as well. So use the Q&A box. You can also put them in the chat, but it's a lot easier to see the questions in the Q&A box. Let me unmute Brandon. There you go. All right, cool. Brandon, yeah. can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So how you doing today, Brandon? Oh, I was sitting here working. Actually, <laughs> I was watching Dan Law. I don't know if people are familiar with Dan Law. Um, he's working on systemizing a business. Mm -hmm. Okay, is your phone sitting on something? You're a little bit low. Um, no, I'm on the computer. Um, um, okay. Um, hold on, let me see. Um, start dropping your questions, guy. We're we're gonna start addressing them right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to change. Now I don't we can hear you. Is. We can hear you now. Uh, whatever you just did. All right. So yeah, let's get right into this. I wanted to um basically. I call myself the curator of vibes, so I like to use vibes as an acronym for value, inspiration, business ownership, entertainment, success. Those are pretty much my five core values. And um, I've been on different platforms in my time of, you know, in my fi financial education journey and personal development journey. I've taken a lot of different courses. I've helped build dope courses. So I understand both sides of being somebody who wants to take a course or wants to learn and then also being on the side of creating those. So I've already seen some dope questions. <clears throat> Is all the speakers unmuted? 
because I want to, yeah, yeah, because aren't we going to be asking, we're going to, you know, kind of give them the, give them the light to answer some of these questions. And I saw a dope question, and somebody can jump on this, um, Tyra, Tyra Wilson, to all panelists. Um, great question. Uh, no, that. Hey, Tonya, what? Maybe you can wait a Mute. I ask them a question, so I'll give it to them. Okay, because I was like, this, this isn't happening the way we. <laughs> all right, so Tyra Wilson, I understand the mindset and taking action. However, how do you stay uplifted when you have access to a property in distress? Have contacted, have contact info, but no one answered. I know it's power in numbers. But what do the gurus do to keep pushing? I think that's a great question because a lot of times people will tell you to keep pushing. They don't, and they tell you, you know, it's powers and number. Hit up all these people. But give if, if I'm gonna go through the list. If if, if all you guys can um, give a practical step on how do you keep pushing? Is it meditation? Is it um, you know having a system in place? So, Mr. Transaction King, I think that was a great question as well. Um, how do you? continue to keep pushing when you're not getting um, the results that you want. So that's from Tyra Wilson. You on mute. Um, I can't you're directing you. that question to Mr. Transaction Yeah, we're going to go through everybody. So the top on my list right there, I see Mr. Transaction Engineer. If he okay. Can okay. Let's see if he's still. If Ed, okay, Ed off of mute now. Oh, no, he's still on mute. They may not realize that they are um, coming back on. Let me see. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> You're on mute, bro. There, there. Oh, there. There you go, man. You can talk. What's up, guys? So how you, keep, how you keep going, man? You just got to keep going, man. Like I say, that's why I'm always reading. See, the thing is, we got to renew our mind. But how do you renew your mind? You got to put new information into your mind. You got to put new information inside your mind. That's why it's so important to meditate. That's why it's so important to read new information, new books on self-development, because they make you see you know, that you got to keep going, that you got to keep pushing. Appreciate that. You got to keep identifying your why. Why do you need to do a deal? You know, why you need to take action? You got to ask yourself that why. And if that why is big enough, it usually will push you. It'll keep you pushing even when you don't want to push it. Like but, you know, it requires change. And it requires self-development, self-help. Self development, the best person we could work on is ourselves. Like, honest to God, truth, the best person we could work on is ourselves, man. Because it's all mental, man. Once you learn how to master that mind, and that's what a real mastermind is he who masters his mind is me. You control your thoughts and control your speaking, all this stuff matters. So if you're speaking, like they say, life and death is in the power of the tongue, but if you're speaking death every day, I ain't gonna do a deal, I ain't gonna do a deal. And you listen to this negative Nelly talking about you ain't not gonna do a deal either, then you start to believe that that get in your subconscious mind and consciously you start not doing nothing. You start not taking any action. So you gotta just keep pushing, man. It's all mental. So I like that. So hopefully Tara, Tara, I, I, I always have, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I know people pronounce it different, Tara, Tara. So hopefully that answered your question. He gave a couple um practical advice on reading keeping your mind strong and really identifying your why all right so let's go to the next question hold on let me go to q marshall diana do you have lists for los angeles i can answer that for her right now no she does not um she specializes in north carolina in georgia correct at the moment so yeah, but she has, a, I don't know if she talked about it, she has a course coming out soon that's going to show you how to pull a list in any city. All right, let me find another question. Y'all come with the questions. I don't see too many. 
Um, it was another one I saw. All right, I think this for your last um, speakers, was it Tim and William? Am I correct? Is there, is there a type you all look for? So I'm guessing they're talking about the deals. They said they were looking for deals. So is there a type, fellas, that a type of deal that you are looking for? So we can unmute them. Let me make sure. There you go. Uh, right now, you know, we pretty much um, we're looking for deals all over, you know, all over the metro Atlanta right now. Um, you know, as long as it's a good deal, long like I mentioned earlier, as long as the numbers make sense, uh, we're looking for deals, you know, all over. Um, especially specifically the major surrounding counties. I mean, of course, you know, Atlanta, and we kind of go within like a 30 mile to 40 mile radius of the city limits. So, um, so any deal you get, just send it to REI Wholesellers R Us at gmail.com. REI Wholesellers R Us at gmail.com. Uh, I'm sure any of the gentlemen that's been on the call so far, I mean, we all doing the same thing and we all got powerful lists. So any one of the guys that's on the line, you can reach out to any one of us. I think everybody have put in their email addresses. Um, but we're, we can all assist you, but that's our information. But, you know, again, everybody can help you on the line that was speaking today. All right. Uh, Jacquez, did you have something you wanted to add? Can you hear me? I see you came back on video. Did you have something you wanted to add about deals that you're looking for? Okay, maybe not. Okay, let's keep it going. Um, I did have some questions, Brandon, that I wrote down from earlier. Um, somebody asked about whether a LLC was necessary. Um, I'm always gonna say, just go ahead and pay and get your LLC. Um, yes, you can do deals, you know, obviously without one, but you want to always make sure you're legally protected, okay? So I, I personally believe when money starts to exchange hands, you should be protected. So um, I did want to address that, but, you know, so just find out the rules in your states. I know we got people from all over. Um, we actually will do, we can do it for you at Law Clerk On Demand, or you can find somebody in your state, or you can do it yourself, whatever you want to do, um, but definitely just go ahead and knock the LLC out, okay? Um, and the same thing if you're looking for a real estate attorney, um, reach out to like your RIAs, your meetups. I know we said a, a couple of attorneys on here today, but figure out who is real estate investor friendly, who's familiar with these type of deals in your state, okay? Brandon, you got something you wanna add? You muted. <laughs> you said something passionate, but you're muted. Oh, I have to unmute you. Good thing I can read lips because I'm like, what you saying, bro? Okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> Stop, muting me. Stop muting me. Tell her that. All right, so cool. Yeah, Um, let's get to another question. Um, is Justin Ship? what's going on, brother? When will the recording be available? He on mute. Unmute Justin. Unmute him. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there's Justin right there. What's going on, man? We just wanted to find out. What... I got a lot of people asking me about the replay. All right, I think there's froze up. He's asking about the replay, Deanna. You can unmute yourself. So uh, this is my first webinar uh, via Zoom, but I'm recording. So as soon as I can edit this, we'll make it available, uh, whether that's via YouTube or emailing it out. I will get, I'll get on top of this right now. Good question. All right, cool. All right, we got some more Q&As. All okay. right. The next one is from JJ. I don't know how to pronounce the last name. It's I-Z-U-E-G-B-U. For the wholesalers, any stories to help people get started and have the wherewithal to keep going? So, Justin, since you are answer that question. Okay. 
for the wholesalers. Any stores that help people start and have to wear a thong to keep going. Hold on, I'm, I'm here. I can't, I can't, I guess you can't see the video, I guess. I can see it now. Okay. Okay. Can, can you ask that one more time, please? Yeah, no problem. For the wholesalers, any stores to help people get started and have the wherewithal to keep going. So I guess we kind of answered that, the keep going yeah. part, but let's give some advice on how to get started in wholesaling. Yeah, the main thing, uh, the main thing is just, you know, you know, you got to get your mind right. Uh, get, that's the main thing um, is get your mind right. And once you get your mind right, and I guess Ooh. we talked about mindset um, a little bit before, but get your mind right. Once you get your mind right, then you can kind of accept what it is that you're doing. Um, accept that you are going to be able to be, you are going to move forward in this. And once you do that, then uh, just follow the instructions. Follow the instructions that you know that that we're given. Uh, choose a marketing. Uh, choose a, choose a way that you're going to be marketing. You know, if it's going to be driving for dollars, choose that. Um, if it's going to be um, if if it's going to be cold calling, do that. If it's going to be sending out um, sending out postcards, do that. But get do your that. mind right. Make sure that this is what you're supposed to be doing. Once you get that right, then choose what the channel that you're going to use and go ahead and move forward in it. And uh, like we said. The first step is always the best step because we got partners and people that are going to be able to help you uh, get to the other side. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, the the living legend, I like to call him um, um, Ramon. What's his name? You know, I'm talking with the long. The mayor. The mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he say, in order to get your money right, you got to get your mind right. So, uh, Taku. Taku. I always forget about his name. Like, but yeah, so, but I, heard, I heard him say that five years ago, and it stuck with me since. And, and as I study different people in different industries, um, the first thing, I love courses that start with the mind frame, the right. mindset. Because you can't, and I'm watching Dan Locke right now again, like I said, that the way you do everything, I mean, anything is how you do everything. Right. So if you, I, I, this might be so, kind of crazy, but I believe in if you keep a junky room, you're going to have a junky business. So I try to make my bed up every morning or I try to clean up. And I know sometimes as men, we can be a little junky. So that's not always true. But at the same time, I think with how you do the smallest things is how you're going to do the big things. So I'm, I'm glad you said that. I start with the mind frame first and then pick one. You kind of go deep into it. So, Ramon, I'm going to ask you a question, then we're going to get back. To yes, sir. Justin. Justin here, we're gonna What's going on? Nothing much. Nothing much. So, I was blessed. So, I got a question coming. We only got one for Ramon right now. Um, so, Ramon, I have been to, I have been able to get contracts in my area, but when I attended this in Atlanta, they say, that I'm too far out. Are there any investors in the Carroll, Arlen Harrelson County area, 50 to 60 miles out? So are you yeah. in that area, any one of you guys? Yes, I am. Yeah. I work in the Carroll County area a lot. You work in that so, area so, a lot? I, and I didn't know that, Justin. So I, I was just in Carrollton with somebody that just bought like four properties. So we, we definitely didn't leak up. But th there's investors in every county. I don't care where you are. Somebody's buying. So always know, don't, let me say, and, and not knocking anybody, but you don't have to be in the Atlanta market to make money. Somebody's making millions in every, every city, every county. Somebody's buying some land. Somebody owns the land. Somebody's going to be buying the land. So whoever, um, if, if you're thinking somebody's not buying, they're buying. If you get it at the right price, somebody's buying. Got you. Love it. Um, let's see. I don't really have any more questions. Anybody? Oh, okay. I got one. I got one. So who's unmuted right now? We can, I guess, Ramon, you still unmuted. We'll hit you another question. So where can I find a template to send out letters to sellers? I don't know what to say once I skip tracing a letter or a text or um, cold calling. So basically they want to know some tips. I think all of us on here, you can send a message to anybody. Um, Dion, I'm not sure. Dion, you have some stuff in your marketing class, right? 
Yes, yes. You can go on lawclerkondemand.com. There's a full marketing binder um, that has seven different letters, mm -hmm. a sample postcard, a cold call script, action plan, everything you need to get started. So you will have zero excuses once you got the marketing binder. So um, easy peasy and created that with Stacey Rossetti, who founded the RIA. We did it together. Okay. So First, I just want y'all to see the waves of it. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we got a couple more so there are so there are so many courses hold on not the waves <laughs> all right thank you for reaching out today there are so many courses charisma there are so many courses i i don't you didn't all right how do i choose the correct course and how to get started that's a great question let me answer that for you so i um I gotta take a picture of that question too. I love that question because I was just talking to one of my mentors about this and, and really defining um, how I can be of service in that department. Like I said, I started off saying, I've been able to help create an Inc. 5000 course. Um, I've been able to, I've probably taken every course on them. I'm one of those people that if the course under a thousand dollars i'm gonna just buy it like i don't have to think about it too much so i got from sales courses i got grant cardone i got jordan belford course i got ty lopez course billy jean is marketing but i would just take these courses just to hoard the information i definitely take action in them and i think it's a couple of things that you should look for in the course like you said there's so many different courses to choose from it's kind of hard you say, okay, I'm gonna go with this person. One, it's a field for personality, right? There's so many courses you could take, but some person, one person personality might might um, resonate with you a little better. So one guy may be a little better storyteller in his courses, and that and you like that better. One guy may be um, tells in his courses a little with a little humor. One guy might be born, but he's a better teacher. It's almost like different pastors and preachers. I hate to kind of use that example, but that's what that's kind of what it is with all of these courses. You got so many people to choose from. So I say in just three steps, one step, do your research on the teacher. We live in a world now, anybody can be anybody on social media, right? Um, I, I got friends right now, and he started, a, he saw me kind of start. I had a course called Shoot Your Shot Academy on how to slide in the DMs to get, you know, that that person of the opposite sex that you want, right? But then I saw my homeboy kind of create something different for it, and he said he was like the modern day hitch or something. I'm like, bro, you never really got women like that. How are you making that course? But he started selling so many courses from me. So do your research on your teachers first and kind of and ask people in the program how, have they, um, how they're experiencing from me. Two, another thing I like in courses is, do they have quizzes inside of the courses? Because as, as they say, you know, you can learn the information, but can it's better when you can apply the information that you're learning as well. So I like courses inside, um, inside of, of, I mean, I like quizzes inside of the course. Instead of just getting all this information, once I get this information, quiz me a little bit, kind of like in school and then go apply it. And the third step I like in that, you know, that helps you choose a course is, is there some type of community to build with? So is it a Facebook group? Is it, is it a community built with inside the course that you can talk to and build with other students? Because like they say, your network is your network. I've been blessed to be around so many dope people from Ramon to Ed on here to Deanna. Now that I see William and Tim. I'm going to meet you guys. We're going to build justice. Um, justice shit. We're going to build. I've been blessed to be around so many dope individuals. Yeah, that's that's me accelerate my career faster, right? So, but I'm 34 now. I haven't technically worked a nine to five since I was 24 years old. So I'm going to my 10 year anniversary because really mainly because of the relationships I built from courses. And that's no lie like i've taken courses i met dope people inside of these courses and we've all been able to help each other so one do your research on the teacher two make sure to cut um this um it's an interactive course thank you carlton 
It's an interactive course, has quizzes and everything in there. And three, does it have an online student community? I hope that helped you, whoever asked that question. Yeah, charisma. Hope that helped you. Definitely. Salute. I'm glad I did that job then. So let's get, let's leave, let's leave off with this, Deanna. I, I know before I get up out of here and then Deanna, you can close it out. So every, if you can, right, we don't have to unmute them all at the same time. I want to allow everybody that's on here to leave with some type of closing remark and how, I don't know if they answered this already, but what are they doing to prepare for what's to come in the world, in their business? And I think that will help the everyday. So Ramon up right now, you you the first person, and then you can we can go down the list. Um, you know, tend to work. Um, like I told him earlier, Brandon, get as much access to cash um as possible. Because, you know, even if let's say it all goes crazy over the next few months, we need to survive. Um, and this is not me like doom world, but if you got some cash, whether you get it off your credit card or whatever, you can fix your credit when it gets back, right? Two, uh, you want to have cash so that we can go out there and buy the properties when, when, when we do get the deals, because the deals are coming. Um, I, I know we got a lot of wholesalers on here. It's going to, just like uh, I Tim talked about uh, educating our sellers, educating the wholesalers, that, the wholesalers that have been able to throw up a net and catch a bunch of uh, I'm gonna say it, something. Catch a bunch of stuff um, lately. That's going to change, and it's changing for the better. Like I'm not, I'm not counting anybody's money, but a lot of people have been kind of lucky, uh, and they have screwed up some things where they're going out there. And then we got to clean it up. And so I know a lot of us go behind people that's not able to close, and they make these crazy offers. And then so that's going to stop. So we got to have the capital to make sure we can go and do what we need to do uh, and buy. So I want everybody to, to, to start saving as much, spending less, saving more, uh, and focusing on getting capital from, you know, like I said, from, your, from cash, from closings, and also from, you know, wherever, wherever you can leverage your credit. So that's really, really what we're focusing on, Brandon, and then making sure we're organized enough so that we continue to grow with all the resources that we have. Uh, and we all have... Everybody on here, if y'all listening, we all got the same resources. If I got it, you got it. If Tim got it, you got it. We don't hoard our resources. We don't say, hey, Tim, don't give it to them. Don't, Brandon, don't give it. Deanna brought us all together today, and a lot of people would not be able to pull this off, but we're all on it because of Deanna, so Deanna, thank you. But use these resources um, and, and make sure that you are, um, you know, taking advantage of it and understanding how to use it because everything that we got, y'all got it, all right? That's, that's my advice, Brandon. All right, we can go down the list, Deanna, whoever unmuted next. Tam, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, main thing, uh, main thing, guys, is, is you know, listen, just qualify, requalify, qualify, requalify. Um, you know, get your mind right. Uh, get your mindset right. Um, I like how Eddie was talking about how he was talking about, you know, requalify your why, okay? That's another thing. Requalify your why. Why are you doing this? You know, what's going to drive you? What's going to, you know, because a lot of times our why changes and our why adjusts. adjusts. So requalify your why and, um, and, and, and then just qualify and requalify your buyers and sellers. Um, that's the thing that we're doing. Um, I'm working now in my business. I'm working through my business now. Um, so those things, those things you definitely have to do. And, um, and, just, and just be, you know, be wise. Be wise about your money. Be wise about your spending right now. And um, stay, um, stay, stay, um, stay profitable. Absolutely. Uh, let's get Jacquez. I see you're ready. So, um, to leave off, I really just want to emphasize on just making sure new people uh, don't chase after every deal. There are, there are sellers that it's okay to walk away from. So just learn that your time is valuable in this business. Your time is literally like literal money, so you decide what your time is worth, right? Um, very good.
big on that. And I know they're touching back on the networking as well, too. Make sure that you're networking because, honestly, uh, that has opened doors for me. Especially, like, uh, being, like, nine, I'm 20 now, but when I first did that first book, I was 19, is because I went out and I searched mentors and who taught me the game with bars and how to do that stuff. Um, and then also, I think Justin wanted to leave off something for the um, other guys in the, in the group. Yeah, so for the panelists, um, all, all the big hitters and stuff, we're doing a mastermind meetup every Friday, um, every last Friday of the month. Um, we've been holding it in Kennesaw. Um, it's only for people that are actually doing deals every month consistently. Um, this month, I know with everything going on with the coronavirus, I don't know how many people going to actually want to uh, be out and about, but uh, we're holding it at our, at our office in Ackworth this this month. So next Friday, if any of y'all are wanting to join in on the uh, mastermind meetup, hit me up in a private message. I'll give you the address. All right, that's good. And then uh, for anybody that's new, um, if y'all have any questions or need to reach out for me for help or or any of the other panelists, I'm sure is, is more than welcome to um, help you as well. But if you need to reach out to anybody on specific questions or um, material or you just have a have a basic question or need help with a uh, structuring a deal reach out to me at any time uh justin ship at chaoticres.com is my email or you can find me on facebook and instagram that's all, all i got all right will wait sorry press my up on my end yeah, I just want everybody just to um, be okay with change, be okay with adapting to, you know, what's what's going on out here. Um, don't be in fear, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing, you know, you don't want to be in fear because, and, and get into a place where you don't want to take action. So let's, let's, and that's why I say community is so big. I know I keep, I've been saying it for a lot while, but it's up to us as a community to keep building each other up. Um, there are going to be people that's listening. They need to be encouraged, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, um, you know, Make sure, you know, Justin just said something about his, his thing he got going on Friday. Ramon do, you know, deal makers. Um, he do the morning, Monday morning thing. Uh, Deanna have, you know, things going on where she has things at South Atlanta Rio. And, of course, you know, we have our meetup every last Saturday. And we also have, you know, our Monday mindset thing. Uh, I just think that we need to continue to keep focusing on building each other up, you know, continue to keep, you know, understanding that fear is not going to take over us. We want to keep working. Keep staying consistent, continue, you know, and, and also, you know, while you're in quarantine, you know, spend time with your family, you know, get, get, spend time with your family. Um, this may be a chance where you can, you know, spend that time you haven't been able to spend with your family um, to, you know, to, you know, because I know it's been great, you know, the last couple of days I've been, you know, at home with my wife and it's been a great, great opportunity for us to be together. So I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity. So it's just not always about work too, you know, let's think about that too as well. And let's just keep working, you know, while we're at home, keep working, staying consistent, making calls. You know, like Tim said earlier, um, I'm going through my old leads, leads from last year, you know what I'm saying? And I'm calling those people right now. So let's dig up some of these old leads. Let's um, try to resurface some stuff that, you know, may still be in your database because our database right now is powerful, you know. So let's um, keep working. And if you don't have a database, you need to be building a database. You need to be building um, a lead flow. So keep working, keep staying consistent. Follow all of us, you know, um, on all of our platforms. We all have different ways where we can get back. Um, but community is everything, like I said earlier. And, again, if you want to follow me, I'm at Uncle Bill by Houses on Instagram. Um, are y'all wholesalers or us at Gmail is how you can get a tip from me, me or Tim if you want to send us a deal. And um, I look forward to working with everybody. It was This was awesome today. Thanks, Dion. All right. Let's see. Ramon got something to say. There you go. Hey, check this out. Check this out. I, you know, I, I know these are, are times when we're so serious today, but I got a question, and, and, and this is for Will. All of us, they text me, Will, so don't think I'm the only one. We want to know how is your window above the bb and window down there? He like George <laughs> Jefferson. He done moved on up on us. He's doing a lot of things. <laughs> we see that. Uh, I was waiting. On that to come from you. I was waiting. I thought I was gonna get it through a text message, but I didn't think I was gonna get it on Zoom. Hey, but Brandon. I was waiting on that from you. Hey, Brandon, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a phone call. Let's get a text from Ramon, and he gonna joke about it. But <laughs> I, I see you calling me out tonight. <laughs> he looking down on the BBT building. <laughs> <laughs> Look.
look, no, seriously, though, y'all, this has been great. Um, motivating. We got to keep this stuff going, especially while we're here, because, like you said, man, we have so much stuff for us to do. Deanna, we love you. We, we appreciate you and everybody that was on here. Thank y'all, because I'm even more motivated, um, yeah. which means we can go motivate more people, and we know that we're going to be okay. Like y'all said, we have to reevaluate our why. I like that. You know, my why used to be my kids, but as they get grown, <laughs> but again, though, y'all, thank y'all, man. I, I love y'all, Deanna. I appreciate you having me on here, uh, and I look forward to whatever's coming, y'all, these next few weeks. You know, I'm going out in the field now to look at some properties, um, and and again, y'all, we can all continue to do this, y'all. So. Again, love y'all for this, man. Thank y'all. Uh, thank you, Brandon, uh, and, and everybody that's on here. Yes, yes, yes. Three mayor times. has spoken. They had the last one, I believe. Oh, okay. The mayor. Head <laughs> <laughs> on mute, though. Who so that? Uh, oh, Eddie. Nah, he good. Nah, he good. Transaction King. <laughs> yes, sir. Guys, God bless each and every one of y'all, man. It was a great. <laughs> Great Zoom meeting. Thank you, Deanna. Um, the what we're doing, guys, we're just gonna we're gonna keep acting like nothing happened, man. Just keep on going hard. Cause of, you know, people going out spending money that they don't have. So that means they're gonna need some money in the future, which means another 30, 60, 90 days. So it's gonna be a lot of motivated sellers. So I say it's time to while you got that time off, you need to be learning some stuff with this real estate or whatever you're into and take action. I mean, it, it all boils down to taking action. If you don't take action, nothing's going to happen. You can have a million courses, but if you don't do nothing that's in the course, it's not going to benefit you. So my thing is, guys, keep going hard, take action, <clears throat> don't stop. I'm going to read a quote from one of the, one of my, um, my coaches I like to read. It said, all of us have our own inner fears, beliefs, and opinions. These inner assumptions rule and govern our lives. A suggestion has no power in and of itself. It power arises from the fact that you accept it mentally. So you gotta accept it mentally in order for any of this, the coronavirus, all this stuff to affect you. It's all about that mind, guys. Real Be stuff. Take massive action. It's good. That's good. Well, that's by Dang. Joseph Murphy, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. I love it. All right, D, you close it out. D, this show show, so. <laughs> it's really not. It's all about you guys. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for giving us your Saturday. Um, what a blessing to be able to just log on and get nonstop content, nonstop um real um real estate education you know what i mean so i'm grateful um as i told you guys in the beginning these are people that i've learned from i continue to learn from did you guys enjoy the webinar virtual summit tell me in the comments say yeah if you enjoyed it yes yes um mr transaction engineer just posted the book he read from joseph murphy the power of your subconscious mind that's what i'm talking about all right so look at all the love you guys are getting so listen guys just to recap everything yes i did record this meeting so now i have to figure out how to get it to you so just hold on a second okay because i don't know what i'm doing but i'm gonna I'm <laughs> download this and then hopefully make it available on youtube or we'll figure it out but i'll get it out to you guys because i know you want to go back and review your notes Please make sure you follow all of these great people on Instagram. If you need somebody's information that spoke today and you're unsure how to reach them, can't find them, you know I got you. You can follow me at Law Clerk On Demand um, on Instagram. Law Clerk On Demand is my company. We're your local lead list provider. Probate lists are our specialty. Yes, the lists come with phone numbers. Um, and this entire meeting is a subgroup of South Atlanta RIA. So we're in partnership with them. I just facilitate the group bringing in speakers. We'll be doing this again the third Saturday of next month, probably virtual the way things are looking. So be on the lookout, but make sure you're following me on social media so you can see um, or add me on Facebook so you can see when the next meeting is, okay?
I think the next immediate meeting is going to be Will and Tim on Monday. So make sure y'all go to their meetup um, on uh, Wholesalers R Us on meetup.com. So you'll be on that. Then the next meeting after that is going to be Ramon at Dealmaker. So you see how this works, y'all? So um, please let me know if I can help you at all. Yes, the season lists are on sale. I dropped the link. I'm going to do it one more time. Damn it. There you go. So if you need a season list, season means anything from today on back. <laughs> okay. 97 bucks. Just put it in the um, just put the month that you want in the comments. And if you have a question, just send me an email. Okay. I'm answering emails and calls today. All right. So thank you guys so much. Text the word RIA to the same number that you registered for this event under so text reia to 67076 that is how you join south atlanta ria so you can hear about other events okay and oh and i'm on youtube so that's where you're gonna find this recording so law clerk on demand on youtube please subscribe um and you'll see i'm gonna bother all of these people to interview them so that's on youtube too but they don't know it yet because I'm about to ask them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. That's it. Thank you for your Saturday. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This important one. The guy. That was my closeout. <laughs> we closed. Go what ahead, time is Monday. Monday meetings with Ramon for mental wellness. That's important. That's why. I want oh to yeah. Say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ramon. Oh, I gotta unmute you. This is a hard job. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's uh. It's Sunday night from 11 to 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, if you're following us, we'll post it again, but it's, it's every Sunday night from 11 to 11.30, which gives everybody a chance to settle down. And we got the West Coast people who, you know, they always say we, we, we do it at the wrong time, so it's still Sunday night for them. Uh, but 11 to 11.30. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. And then um, Will and Tim, I'm going to unmute y'all. Can y'all remind us? Did I do that right? There you go. Yeah. Can you remind us when your meetup is? Yeah, we um, first off, we're going to have our Monday call, uh, which will be uh, Monday evening at, uh, at 8 p.m. And uh, our meetup is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be next Saturday. And it is going to be an online meetup. Um, it's going to be an online meetup uh, in respect to what's going on. So it'll be next Saturday, um, if, if that's the last Saturday of the month. Um, and uh, it'll be from 11 to 2. Will? Mm -hmm. be, I think it'll be oh, yeah, something like that. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah. <laughs> we are, you know, we, we're adjusting, but yeah, we definitely, definitely, um, we look forward to the Monday call, um, yeah. which is definitely going to be, you know, money making motivational mindset Monday Zoom, yes. uh, which is going to be uh, this Monday. And uh, again, you can just type in REI Wholesalers R Us at gmail.com and uh, we'll give you access to those links. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Transaction Engineer, how can folks keep up with what you got going on? I just unmuted you. Unmute yourself. Is it working? There you go. There you go. Hey, guys, you can follow me across um, Facebook, um, YouTube, Mr. Transaction Engineer dot com, IG, Mr. Underscore Transaction uh, Underscore Engineer. <laughs> Um, we have every Thursday between seven and eight, we have a, for all of our students, we have a call every, every Thursday between seven and eight. So just DM me or get in contact with us. You know, we'll let you in. Here's some good golden nuggets. I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, and guys, uh, engineer. what'd you say, Will? We'll say we'll oh, that name, transaction engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the man. All right. So, um, yeah, so this was great. Y'all, look, we still got people hanging out with us. Y'all want to keep going? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think everybody needs a water break, but this was fantastic. I'm so grateful. Um, so, like I said, if you want to see more webinars, you want to know what's going on, follow me on social media, Law Clerk on Demand, like the page on Facebook. That's where I post all the flyers. If you need to reach anyone that spoke today, I will definitely give you their information. Um, like South Atlanta Ria's page on Facebook as well and on Instagram. So you can see the updates, you can see more stuff, okay? I think that's everything, everyone. We are literally on time. That's how fab, like, I'm impressed. That's I how you do it. <laughs> that's how you do it. Hey, that was, that was just, 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 that
I'm all surprised. It's only about four, five o'clock right now. <laughs> oh, we going late. We late every time. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> so organized. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but cool. All right. Well, thank you guys. We gonna say Ramon. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying I love them and, and y'all have a good day. Okay. Love you guys. Be blessed, man. Guys. Stay blessed and stay focused. Stay okay. safe. And right. safe. Get your sanitizer now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. All right. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye -bye. All right.